welcome everybody to Lincoln, Nebraska, home of the five-time national champion Nebraska Cornhuskers. The last two weeks, they have been tough, but the Big Red faithful have come to see their team try to take a huge step towards winning the Big 12 North. Quarterback Zach Taylor leads the offense. It's the best in the conference this season. Missouri and quarterback Chase Daniel provide the challenge today. The winner is going to have the inside track to the Big 12 championship game. Missouri and Nebraska coming up. But now let's take you to New York. John, Craig, and Doug. Gary, thanks a lot. And we do have a host of big games today on ABC beginning. About three minutes. Not to pick things off. Missouri, Nebraska, of course, you're getting that. Penn State, Wisconsin is a big game. Penn State quietly having a better year than most people thought. And Craig, Oklahoma, Texas A&M, big one for A&M. Yeah, you know, Penn State hasn't beaten a ranked opponent this year, so we'll find out a little bit more about them. How about Texas A&M? This Dennis Franchoni team really has a tough ending to their season. They're set up nicely. They've done exactly what they needed to do to get to this point. But Franchoni's 0-7 against Oklahoma, Nebraska, and Texas. Those are the three last opponents. We're about to find out if the Aggies really are there. They have staying power or not a very big game for them. Yeah, another big game in the Big 12. Actually, for the Big 12 North, first place in the Big 12 North will be Missouri and Nebraska. And right now, Missouri's relying way too much on Chase Daniel. And, and last week, he's running around making plays, and it leads to turnovers when you're forcing the issue. And again, it's good. last week against Oklahoma, this week against Nebraska, he's going to have to force the issue. All right. As we said, a host of big games, most of them on ABC, some of them elsewhere. We'll be following today. LSU and Tennessee, Houston. Huge game in the SEC and Boston College and Wake Forest. Who would have ever thought Wake Forest would be in the running to make it to the ACC championship game? They'll have to get through Boston College to do just that. So coming up, we're going to have Missouri and Nebraska. Big game in the Big 12. After these messages and a word from our ABC station. Lincoln, Nebraska, the Tigers and the Cornhuskers, the 100th time they have met going back to 1893. And for Nebraska, it's homecoming. It's presented by Best Buy. And what's at stake today? What's at stake is a chance to go to the Big 12 championship game because today's game will all but decide the winner in the Northern Division. Missouri and Nebraska both are three and two in Big 12 play right now. Hi everybody, I'm Gary Thorne along with Andre Ware. Dave Lamont will be joining us down on the field momentarily. We take a look first at Nebraska. Their offense among the top 25. Passing, rushing, total offense, and in scoring. And it all starts with the QB. Yeah, it all starts with their quarterback, their senior quarterback, Zach Taylor, who basically took over this offense a year ago, led him to a Alamo victory over Michigan late in the season, led his junior college football team to a national championship uh, in that appearance in the national championship in that game. He knows this offense has taken him two full years to get a full grasp on it, but he's got it running on all cylinders. At running back, it's going to be the eye back by committee. It'll start with Brandon Jackson, who has just been explosive the last two weeks. We'll see Cody Glenn, Marlon Lucky, and the other Kenny Wilson, but it's the same result no matter who's in the backfield, Gary. It's Nebraska on the ground running for big chunks. And that's what we're going to see today. Let's take a look at Missouri as our good friend and former coach Bill Curry likes to say, in this day and age when you talk about offense, Andre, you go right to the quarterback, so let's go right there. Yeah, and it's the guy pulling the trigger for them, Chase Daniel, who's only lost three football games since his junior year in high school, so he is an uncharted waters he's trying to get the ship right in the correct direction for this Missouri football team struggled a little bit last week the first game he's gone without a touchdown pass and then you look at Earl Goldsmith who'll be in the backfield with him today Tony Temple will see him as well he's been demoted because of fumble problems but we'll see a lot of Tony Temple so what we're saying is both defenses are really going to be tested today which one's going to hold up Dave Lamont from Missouri defensively they're missing a guy
why they wish they had. Oh boy, you got that right, Gary. A lot of people sitting down eagerly waiting this game. They got their snacks, they got their beverages, but I can guarantee you there's one viewer in Missouri who would really want to be here. We're talking about Brian Smith. Missouri's all-time sack leader suffered a crack tip a couple of weeks ago. He is out for the regular season and his availability even for the bowl game is in question. This injury was so painful he couldn't even go to his classes for a little while. Actually had to have his work brought to him. His place is being taken by striker Sulak who does have 26 and a half fewer sacks lifetime but is tied him for the lead among Missouri linemen with the most tackles. His task today, you've already touched on it, try to contain one of the most explosive offenses not just in the Big 12 but in the entire nation. You know, uh, Andre, we talk about injuries, and coaches don't like to use excuses, but when you have injuries like that, they're injuries that really do matter. Yeah, and, and you know, when you're talking about the best pass rusher on the team, and you look at the teams that kind of get through the season, Ohio State, been injury-free for the most part, and then you look on the other side of it, Oklahoma, who's had tremendous injury, injuries with their best football player, Adrian Peterson. Gary, it's just part of the game. And now you got to play through it. That's the case with Missouri and their defense. Let's take a look at our IBM Star Watch offensively. Chase Daniel, the QB, and two of the best tight ends in football are at Missouri. Yeah, you talk about Chase Kaufman and Martin Rucker, arguably the best two in the NCAA. You see there, they know how to get in the end zone. Five touchdown passes, her receptions for Chase Kaufman. Chase Daniel will rely on those two all throughout this ballgame. Missouri is going to get the football first. We are ready to go. Jay Quesh is going to do the kicking. Earl Goldsmith is the primary man they want to carry. 273 games since the last kickoff was returned for a TD. Well we'll see whether or not that changes here in this game. All right it's Nebraska and Missouri. It is an enormously important game for both of these teams both of whom are coming off losses last week games they felt that they should have won or at least played better in. Yeah, especially for Missouri. I mean, they had three interceptions, which is just uncharacteristic of quarterback Chase Daniel. All right, back in, uh, it's going to be Earl Goldsmith, four or five yards deep. That's where he will touch it down, and Missouri will bring the football out to the 20 and start there. Let's take a look at the starting lineups that are presented by City. Missouri wants to keep their offense on the field, move the football. Their D is hurting. Yeah, they want to protect their football player, their best player, Chase Daniel, and it'll be Tyler Llewellyn, the left tackle, who will have his hands full with Adam Carricker throughout this ball game. But look for Missouri to throw the football to open up the run. Well, they're starting with five wide receivers here. Chase Daniel at quarterback. He will move one back into the backfield. Earl Goldsmith, it'll be carried over the 20 to about the 23 yard line as they had that Nebraska defense strung out a little bit with the five receivers and it'll be a gain of maybe a couple take a look at the starting lineups here presented by City for Nebraska defensively whom does the task fall to in this game Andre well it's going to fall to the four the, the uh, four guys in the secondary they will be tested all throughout the ball game Missouri a lot of formations and a lot of passes Earl Goldsmith his first start on the carry line of scrimmage and that's about it this Nebraska defense will stop him no gain Jay Moore who plays in that open end position will be called on to make a lot of tackles he leads the team in tackles for losses this year yeah and, we talked to uh, to Gary Pinkle he said well we want to run the football we're going to run it a little bit more than we're used to running it because we want to take a little pressure off Chase Daniel their quarterback here's the first big third down play third down and long yard it's third down and eight maybe a change at the line for Chase Daniel the big Red Sea making a lot of noise looking over the middle that'll be incomplete at the 27 yard line William Franklin the primary receiver the intended they do not convert it will be three and out for Missouri Yeah, it was Courtney Grigsby the corner to that side of the field two year starter he started all 12 games last year matched up on Will Franklin probably Missouri's best receiver leads them in receptions this year but that will be a matchup we'll have to keep an eye on because it is speed going against speed on that side of the field. Courtney Grixby will be back for Nebraska. A big stop there. Missouri's been 52 percent on third down conversions this year. And this punt will come back from about the 13 yard line when he puts the foot into it. Taken at the 42 yard line and there will be no gain. Great coverage right there. William Moore after a 40 yard punt moved in and put the hit on and now Nebraska will take over. Let's take a look at the impact players we will see. 
Running back Brandon Jackson has moved to the number one spot. Lucky will be right behind him and Purify can catch. Yeah, they like to screen to Lucky, get him out in space, but it's been Maurice Purify who's really stepped up the last couple of weeks. He's the type of receiver that Bill Callahan has been looking to insert into this Nebraska offense. Four running backs will be used in this game. Brandon Jackson is the man in the backfield right now. They've shifted to a power right. Zach Taylor working at quarterback Jackson on the carry over the 40 and a haul down right there and a gain of uh, probably a couple as Xavier Jackson moves in and puts the hit on for this Nebraska offense. They have been a balanced team this year. We'll see how much of that we see. Expect them to run the football early. Yeah, and look for them to run behind the big offensive line up front. They really like to go behind Matt Sloss at number 70. They're right tackle. That is where they need something short. That's where they're going with the football. As you can see, it is a glorious day here. Fall day where the temperature is going to be about 60 degrees. Jackson and Dane Todd in the backfield. That'll be carried on a bull run up to about the 45 yard line. A gain of four yards. Dane Todd can run the football from that fullback position. Lorenzo Williams moved in on the hit. The Missouri defense, there is no question. They are going to be called on to stop the run. If they don't do that, they are in trouble. Yeah, they'll have to get deep in the trenches, and it'll be the four big guys up front. Ziggy Hood coming back from a uh, broken foot a couple of weeks ago. He'll provide a little bit more bulk on the inside for Missouri. Brandon Jackson in that backfield, the junior running back. Again, they shift it to slot it to the right side. They've got four receivers out there now, including Todd Dane, the fullback. They'll run it to the near side, 50-yard line, and down into Missouri territory, a gain of seven. And out of that backfield, Jackson, Hardy Ricks, the red-shirted freshman quarterback, moved in on the hit. Yeah, it was Marcus Bacon, the outside linebacker, who actually took a, a bad angle. But you see Missouri's rush defense there. The first six games of the season, they only allowed one touchdown. The last three games, 673 yards and five touchdowns. Well, they've got to get that thing turned yeah, around. And that's why Nebraska is going to go straight ahead until uh, Missouri shows they can stop them. Look at the number of people in the box. Everybody on that defense is moved up. It'll be carried by Jackson again. And he fumbles a football. And it's a turnover to Missouri both of these teams have had enormous problems with turnovers it happens again Brock Christopher comes up with it as Jackson lost it yeah and look and it looked like Xavier Jackson was the guy who got a big paw in there you see it here but Jackson starting downhill it was actually Brian Christopher who forced that fumble and then came up came up with it or Jackson came up with it but just a good job he was clearly blocked and just kind of reached for the football that's why you switch that ball to the outside hand away from the defense otherwise guys are trying to stick big paws in there pull it out Missouri looking to pass nobody open it'll be run down by Chase Daniel for a four yard gain he fumbles it and the turnover they're going to rule him down. They said he was down. Nebraska thought they had the football back. Folks, you may see a lot of this today. For some reason, both of these clubs over the last three weeks have had the yips when yeah. it comes to hanging on to the football. Oh, yeah. Dave Christensen, the offensive coordinator, going right to a quicker tempo in this football game. That'll be carried for maybe a yard, and there is Tony Temple trying to earn his spot back. Number 22, the tailback, had been their starter all year. It's the first game where he has not been the starter. Why? Fumbles yeah. took him out. And it didn't take him long to get him back in the game, did it? Well, Because he, <laughs> he had a heck of a week of practice. Yeah. He said he's knocking snot bubbles out of defensive linemen. Hey, get my best player back in the ball game. Let's just say he's developed an attitude, and they like it. That'll be carried down to the 37 yard line, a five yard gain. Equa Eku, the senior wide receiver, it looks like it's going to be short of a first down by a couple, and it's going to bring up a fourth down again. So a fourth down and a couple of yards with the ball spotted at the 38 yard line. Well, Missouri had some pretty good field position down around midfield and unable to come up. With a first down here, maybe a first down and a couple more yards gets him into Jeff Wolford's field goal position, field goal range. Could not quite get there. Grixby uh, will be back standing for Nebraska at his own 10 yard line. There's a big turnover that Missouri did not convert on. Crossett with a kick to the corner and a beauty right at the 10 yard line. That football goes up and down three times and nowhere else. So a beautiful kick by Adam Crossett there, Junior. Nebraska gets the football back. The 100th meeting for the Sea of Red here in Nebraska taking on Missouri. 
The Nebraska Capitol right there with a the seed thrower on top representing this great farmland area and this great matchup Missouri and Nebraska a chance to establish the number one spot in the division 100th meeting Nebraska leads the series they've won 25 of the last 27 and 14 straight here Missouri though won last year 41 24 their last win here 1978 from Missouri it's been a long time been a long, long time. time a lot of hit songs have gone by <laughs> <laughs> Nebraska's got the football at their own 10 yard line Missouri one big chance they did not convert on after getting that fumble at midfield first down and 10 Jackson in his tracks he stumbled as he tried to cut back to the middle and he is going to be thrown for a loss Xavier Jackson that senior defensive end is 31st straight start and is one of their leading tacklers. Boy, just uh, getting tremendous push up the field, and he is having one heck of a season for Missouri. He has five sacks, an interception. Said he came to Missouri to play tight end. He wanted to score touchdowns. Well, a couple of weeks ago against Texas Tech, he picked off Graham Harrell and rumbled 17 yards for a touchdown. Kind of joked about that on Gary Pinkett's yeah. radio show. See if Zach Taylor wants to put it in the air. He's got a 61.9 completion rate. 2,065 yards thrown for it. They go straight ahead and up to the 14 yard line. Jackson again, five yard gain. You can see why this high back situation in Nebraska really now has boiled down to one. He has taken over that number one spot and uh, he's averaging 6.3 a carry. That's why. Yeah, he was recruited by. Uh by Coach Blake, who's there, actually their defensive line coach when he was at Mississippi State. And he said, I talked to him yesterday. I said, how did you get from Mississippi to Nebraska? He said, I just wanted to see where John Blake was going, and that's where I was going to make my decision. He took the train. 46 at 46 percent converting third downs. Add another one to it. A great look in pass. Maurice Purify has become their primary receiver. Zach Taylor on the money, and Nebraska's got a first down. Yeah, Maurice Purify is a guy that they really like to get the football to. Big body, you're going to see him come in, slant route. He's going to catch it right in the first window. Zach Taylor does a good job with his eyes and then the timing right there. Before the linebacker, number 33, Dedrick Harrington, can make a play from inside out. Jackson again comes into the backfield. A first down at 10, ball at the 28-yard line. Dane is also in there. Jackson on the carry. He found a hole, and he will move that up to the 35-yard line good effort it'll be a seven yard gain as Brandon Massey the safety made the tackle on Jackson yeah Andy Christensen in the left guard you're going to see him pull around here and kick out and then all of a sudden there it is the trap block and Brandon Jackson just reads it right up the field they like to do that pull both guards uh, Mike Huff the right guard and now Andy Christensen Christensen subbing in today for Greg Austin who I felt like is their best offensive lineman he's out with a knee injury Jackson doing a lot of carrying early in this game and he stays in there Zach Taylor the quarterback brings the man in motion two receivers end up in the near side and the whistle before the ball was snapped a procedure call coming up against Nebraska and did not get that one off so they'll be moved back it was going to be a second down and four 81 offense five yards second down well, let's take a look Gary just look and it, there's a penalty on the plate by Nebraska but just how committed is Missouri to stop in the run look at all those bodies in there you got just one here and one here that's nine guys in the box you think they want to stop the run game for Nebraska they know they have to but obviously Andre one of the things that they take the risk of is that on one of those plays where they're looking for a run somebody goes play, deep play action pass and when you're having success running the football that's what you got to stop first though we'll worry about the other stuff after but stop the run because that is a way to take the air out of any defense when it's just being run downhill at you. All right, second down and long yardage here. And uh, again, uh, uh, timeout's going to be taken before they can run this play. Why do you stop the Nebraska run? They have rushed for more than 200 yards in five games this season. You stop the running, you don't stop them. Billboards? Great to have you back everybody as you take a look at Heisman Trophy winners. We're going to have a couple of them in the booth here today together. You do not want to miss that. We got one here already at Andre Ware. Brandon Jackson is in the backfield. They slot it to the right side. Jackson again on the carry. Great cover. I mean Missouri all over him that time. Three or four guys in. He'll be thrown for a loss. They uh, have 
the 25th best defense at throwing the opposition for a loss this year and they're getting it done here Dave Lamont. Well Gary this is very unusual it looks like Nebraska isn't substituting on offense maybe the first time it up as soon as I say that here they go they are constantly and Gary you would appreciate this this reminds me of a hockey game they're forever changing personnel they're changing lines all the time they're all by coach Bill Callahan and his assistants and they call out the formation obviously based on his chart down and distance but I've rarely seen a team change offensive personnel as much as these guys do. Yeah, we'll get right into that right after this play. And boy they both are hurrying along here as well Zach Taylor that one's going to be caught 40 yard line up to midfield one man to beat. Look at him carry the D down to the 25 yard line and he's going to be down the ball came out no he, fumble though he's going to be down a 47 yard pass play over the middle before Darnell Terrell could get to him. And it takes a couple of different things here. You're going to see the eyes of Zach Taylor looking down the field in coverage and then the offensive line getting up on the second level which allows for Brandon Jackson to kind of break this thing wide open. Nice screen play and an excellent job with the eyes for Zach Taylor. You have to be able to sell the defense that you're looking down the field in order to complete that for a big game. That is the 16th reception that Jackson has had along with his running game. Here he's a blocker moving to the side looking on the sideline. That'll be incomplete. Pretty good rush put on Zach Taylor that time. And he didn't have anybody open. J.B. Phillips, the intended receiver. I thought he tried to go to Phillips late. J.B. Phillips late, but initially, right after he came off the play fake, J.B. Phillips went on a little corner route along the sideline, and I thought he had him rather quickly and should have gone there with the football. Got flushed out of the pocket, though, and may have disrupted his vision down the field. Now Missouri's defense is going to be tested here. You see, eight on the rush, three on the pass so far for Nebraska this year. 57 percent of their plays have been passes. 43 percent have been rushing in the year. Jackson in the backfield. Jackson's got room, but he can't make the corner. What a great one on one tackle right there by Diedrich Harrington because if he doesn't make it Jackson is gone. Yeah Diedrich Harrington is the middle linebacker here. You're one on one in the hole with a guy with some nice movement and can break tackles and that's what you got to do for sure tackles no matter how you get him on the ground just wrap up and hold on and hopefully some teammates are coming his 40th start. Now a three for three so far on third downs for Nebraska better than they have on the season at 46 percent. They've got another big third down play back deep big rush Jackson can't get it. He was open momentarily but that incomplete pass by Taylor caused by the rush of Xavier Jackson. Let's check in with Matt Weiner back in New York Matt. All right, Gary, it's a Taco Bell update from Lubbock, Texas Tech, with a chance to get bowl eligible today. And so far, so good. Graham Harrell, Edward Britton on the touchdown. Red Raiders have the early lead. At Michigan, Mike Hart has fumbled. That's a headline. His first in 665 carries led to a ball state safety. Wow. Here we're going to have a 40 yard field goal attempt. Jordan Congdon, who is three for five kicking field goals, puts that one up, and it is good. Congdon splits the uprights with a 40 yarder and Nebraska gets on the board with a three nothing lead. What a sea of red we've got here in a day that's going to be about 60 degrees ESPN college football on ABC. Nebraska's big in the first quarter in scoring right now they have outscored the opposition 89 to 10 in the first quarter of this season. They have the three nothing lead here Missouri. Only the second time this year that they've gone behind in the first quarter. Missouri is going to get the football back. They look to get Goldsmith to carry it. He will take it at the one yard line. Goldsmith up to the 10. He will be down shy of the 20 yard line. At about the 18 where they will take it first and 10. National Football League is on hand here today. Dave Lamont. Well, Gary, I'm here with the brother of Martin Rucker, Mike Rucker. Mike, let me ask you this. What's thicker, blood or Nebraska red? Blood is thick, but uh, that, Nas that Nebraska red is thick, too. Um, I hope he does well today, but I hope Nebraska wins. Now, how did he wind up going to Missouri instead of Nebraska? Well, it was a tough call. Um, I think he just wanted to start his own legacy and not have to follow behind me, and he could start with a, a clean start. 
But who are you really rooting for today now? Come on. <laughs> you were, in, by the way, a huge ovation when he was introduced a few minutes ago to this crowd. I really want him to do well. <laughs> Nebraska to win. All right. <laughs> there you have it, the honest truth about here. Mike, of course, has the week off. What a wild coincidence, Gary, that he, the one weekend he does have free, he can come here, watch his alma mater and his brother. That worked perfectly for him. Martin Rucker, there he is. You saw the great rush put on by the Nebraska defense. Second down and 10. Turning to the sideline over the middle and has got at the 20-yard line, but the coverage is there. Franklin got it, but he will gain only four yards on the play. William Franklin, the junior, their leading receiver. He's been gone to a couple of times already in this football game by Chase Daniel, but Daniel is taking a big rush. Yeah, he's getting tremendous pressure from just the front four of Nebraska. They didn't show a lot of pressure last week against Oklahoma State. They played basically base sets, uh, coverage behind it, four cross cover two looks in certain situations, but they are getting tremendous pressure on Chase Daniel with just the defensive line. All for two, third down conversions. Try it again. I am not going to get there. Only to the 24 yard line, a two yard gain. Shanley moved in on the hit. Goldsmith taken down. I think that's a deficiency in this Missouri offense where they take it, they can't go downhill at you. So they rely a lot on the perimeter run game where they're trying to block guys down inside and get Goldsmith around the edge. And it's the same when Tony Temple is in the game. And I think that's where they come up short. A lot of teams, especially if you have speed on defense, can shut down the Missouri running game. So Missouri is going to have to kick this football again. Adam Crossett will be in there to do the kicking. Averages 40 on the season, his longest 79. Puts the foot into it at the 14 yard line. Grixby will take it at the 30 yard line, 35. Gets away from a couple of tackles and up to the 42 yard line. So a 47 yard kick and a 12 yard return by Courtney Grixby. Tonight, don't miss a showdown. Two of the Big 12 best. Oklahoma comes to College Station to rumble. The Aggies of Texas A&M, UCLA, California, or Virginia Tech, Miami. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Saturday Night Football at 8 o'clock, presented by Southwest Airlines. Yeah, and both those teams still in at Oklahoma A&M. That's going to be one heck of a football game tonight. Coming down to the uh, dwindling days as all of a sudden the games take on enormous importance for these teams trying to get to a championship game. Looking to pass from the 35, big hole 40 45, and up to the 49 yard line. Zach Taylor, a seven yard gain. Derek Harrington moved in to put the hit on. Yes. When necessary, Taylor can run the football. Yeah, and Demarcus Scott's the guy that basically had the pressure, almost had him wrapped up, but good job by Zach Taylor protecting the football. He can pull it down, as you mentioned, and make some plays with his legs. What I like there was when he got in traffic, put both hands on the football. He would rather not do that. They've got plenty of running backs, although today <laughs> it's been primarily Brandon Jackson of the four that are generally in that backfield. Dane Todd, Brandon Jackson in there now. Todd, 41, is the big fullback. Jackson following him and will have enough for a first down, a five yard gain. I'll tell you what, the thing that impresses you when you watch Brandon Jackson run the football, and I got a chance to see him on film yesterday. He trusts the offensive line. He will wait for, the, for them to engage into the defenders before he makes a cut. Whether it's a trap block, guys pulling around in front of him, and they're right up the center, right up the gut of the defense. He's waiting patiently, and then all of a sudden, he will show you that explosion, Gary. He's already had the ball nine times today for 29 yards. That's a lot of carries here in the first quarter. A first down and 10. Jackson stays in that backfield. They fake to him, come around the other way to the 40 yard line, a little room sideline down to the 30, and driven out of bounds at the 28 yard line. Terrence Nunn, the wide receiver, has an 18 yard gain. Yeah, he's a three year starter who came in here with Bill Callahan, and they run this play. You see the stretch there, and all of a sudden you see the end around a lot, but they don't give it. This time, Nebraska chooses to give the football to Terrence Nunn, and he's able to sec they secure the corner and get him around the edge, but it's because of the ability to run Brandon Jackson between the tackles that makes for the play and the success to Terrence Newman around the edge. And for none, that is the second carry he's had on the year, only the second. Jackson is in the backfield. They will come around the other way on the option pass. Going to the end zone, man open! Touchdown! Terrence Nunn! Nebraska's got the 
TD. I don't know if there's any quarterback in, in the history, and in, in, in Maurice purifies history, <laughs> whether he played the position or not, but he threw that football about as well as it could be thrown to the back edge of the end zone where only Terrence Newman, you're going to see it here, just a little end around and watch him set his feet. He gets behind him here, and all of a sudden, watch where that ball comes down. Only Terrence Nunn is going to come up with the football. A great pass. I mean, wow. that looks like a regular quarterback. That's the first time he's thrown the football this year for Purify. And a touchdown. The extra point kick is up, and Jordan Condon puts it through. He is 40 out of 41 in point afters. How about the first pass of his career for Purify yeah. and a TD. And watch the concentration on the part of Terrence Nunn right here just to get both feet down. Not just one. You only need one in college football, but he's able to tap them both down. There's one and then the second one right there, the right foot securing the football. Boy, what one heck of a catch. That is just his second touchdown, even though he is the leading receiver on this team. With 29 receptions, he's only had two TDs, but a big one right there. And Nebraska extends their lead in this football game. And what's happened so far in this first quarter, Andre, is just what Missouri did not want to happen. Right. Their offense has not been able to keep possession. I'll tell football. you what, in the in their two losses, Gary, they got behind because it was turnovers. They've got uh, they were ahead of Oklahoma. A, a week ago and then started turning the football over Chase Daniel through three interceptions. They had a fumble by Tony Temple that resulted and all resulted in points for Oklahoma even dating back to Texas A&M. They put the football on the ground a lot in that game. So here they get an early turnover unable to come up with any points and now it's Nebraska who's been uh, who's asserted themselves here early in the first quarter. Goldsmith again has to take a deep and will not be able to return it. They want Goldsmith to be able to bring that football out. He averages 20 yards, but not when you can't bring it out. Later today, ESPN2 will bring you some great college matchups. Number one, Ohio State, Troy Smith and Company at 3.30, taking on Illinois. And at 7 Eastern, 16th ranked Boston College, number two, 22 rather, Wake Forest. College football presented by Pennzoil, coming up ESPN2 Saturday. And the Nebraska fans with a lot to cheer about so far. A first down and 10 with the ball at the 20 yard line. See if they can move it here. That's to the 30 and to the 31 yard line. Enough for a first down. Jared Perry, a freshman wide receiver who's averaging over 10 yards a catch. Yeah, Jared Perry out of Lamarck High School who beat up on my uh, my alma mater, my high school last night. I think they beat him 50 to 7. But he's one heck of an athlete. Came in as a true freshman and just looked good in camp and they could not keep him off the field. Five receivers. Chase Daniel again. The rush is on. Looking on the sideline. Flag is down. He threw that one away. Probably a holding call on Missouri. Jason Ray was the intended receiver. He got chased out of the pocket. And offense number 71. 10 yards, previous spot. That's what it was, trying to protect the quarterback. Gary Pinkles having a long first quarter here for Missouri. Yeah, it's the right guard there. You see the bit, just the, the hand, Colin Brown working inside. And it just gets a little bit too much jersey and draws the attention of the officials. Trying to go to the air, this Nebraska defense is 83rd in the country against the pass, while Missouri offensively is 17th in passing. A little cut is intercepted at the 20 yard line. It got batted up in the air. Came down, did not hit the ground, and Adam Carricker comes away with the interception. Boy, and now Missouri in that oh so that the, the, the water in which they don't want to tread in turnovers. Adam Carricker, probably their best defensive lineman on a lot of preseason publication lists and trying to screen underneath to Will Franklin where he takes a shot. But Ola Doug and Duro and then Adam character right there following the football is able to come up with a big interception. That is his first interception and it is the ninth thrown by Chase Daniel this year and Missouri's getting themselves into very hot water very early in this football game. Yeah we talked to Adam character yes character yesterday and he said this is my kind of game. I get to rush the passer. They like to stay in that shotgun and throw the football. I'm going to have a heck of a day. What great field position 22 yard line the shovel pass straight ahead. That's Marlon Lucky one of those four running backs first time he's handled a football. Brock Christopher made the tackle on him. 
great field position here for Nebraska. Yeah, Brock Christopher played as a true freshman right out of high school last year, played in all 11 games and became a starter this year. But they've subbed in uh, Marlon Lucky, who is giving Brandon Jackson a breather here on this drive. And I'll tell you what, Nebraska with excellent field position. Well, that's going to do it here in the first quarter. And uh, for Nebraska, it was their quarter. They have taken a 10 nothing lead and have dominated because they've been able to keep the offensive team out there while Missouri's just been in and out. You're watching ESPN's College Football on ABC Homecoming in Nebraska. What a sea of red a new record here at Memorial Stadium 85,197 the largest crowd ever for this homecoming for Nebraska. They've got the football that's lucky on the far side turning it up to the 22 yard line and uh, they are again threatening to put another one on the board Darnell Terrell moved in let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Hey you look at it here the rush yards just being dominated by Nebraska passing yards the turnovers are even but the first downs the ones that move the chains and allow you to score at the end of possessions right there being dominated by Nebraska Nebraska's defense their linebackers are hurting all three of them have injuries that they're playing with they did not want to keep them on the field a lot today for Missouri Nebraska's keeping them out there the screen play at the 20 yard line lucky turns to the 10 takes it inside to about the seven yard line before Deidre Carrington brought him down lucky with a 13 yard gain and they really like to screen to Marlon lucky and here in the middle of the formation you see the eyes of Zach Taylor and then here buying time for the defensive lineman to get to him and then all of a sudden you get this from Marlon lucky he is he is unbelievable with the football with explosion once he's in open space. Congdon has kicked the field goal. We've had the pass on the come around from Purify to none for the TD. That's where the tenor from. They're threatening again, looking to the corner. Man open, incomplete. Off the fingertips of wide receiver Todd Peterson, the sophomore. He had double coverage. Yeah, former walk on Todd Peterson came in. He's just a sophomore from Central Catholic High School. Here in uh, New England, you look at it there, just kind of short arms it. He had coverage beaten. The ball was thrown right where it needed to be. Just maybe took his eyes off of it a little bit too early. All right now, Taylor's gone four for seven, 74 yards in the air for Zach Taylor, who in total offense generates over 220 yards a game. Here is a second down and goal. Again, looking to the corner. Now comes to the middle and throws it away. He was under pressure and got hit. As he let the football go, that was A.B. Jackson, that big defensive end who was in on him again. Yeah, just bearing down on Zach Taylor, but he does the smart thing with the football. You're down here trying to get points. It's only second down. Throw it out of the back of the end zone. Don't try to force anything and come back and work third down. The defense of Missouri trying to shut down this Nebraska offense that's already generated 151 yards to Missouri's 26. They've got. Dane Todd Jackson in the backfield of the corner end zone touchdown hold it in just as he crossed the line so now Purify has thrown for one and has caught one well, that's the old fade stop you get pressure or press from the corner and the corners high on top you're going to see here come into the screen he beats the press but it's thrown behind him purposely because of the help coming over the top and Maurice Purify a big athletic guy 6'4 210 pounds with fantastic leaping ability that is the sixth touchdown reception that he has had on the year he is their leader in that department Cogden out go. the kick is up and it is good and it is really good right now yeah. for Nebraska. Hey, what is some kind of homecoming, isn't it? They are dominating here in this game with a 17 to nothing lead over Missouri. And a lot for the Sea of Red to be applauding. The history of Nebraska football, long and rich Hall of Fame players, coaches, and a tough time to pick a hero of this program. Who would it be? We'll find out when we come back. So Nebraska's got the lead here in the second quarter by a score of 17 to nothing. Missouri's going to get the football back. They have not held it for very long so far in this first half. They'll have Goldsmith standing back 
in the end zone and this kick is going to be returnable. It'll be taken at the seven yard line. Earl Goldsmith to the 20 and there he will be brought down at the 22 yard line and that's where Missouri will take over with a first and ten. Let's see if they go to the air. Chase Daniel may have to do that because the running game they've not been able to get established against this Nebraska defense so far. Yeah, it's been just tough going and, and really Missouri trying to throw the football underneath a lot of screen passes a little, little pop passes outside really not challenging this Nebraska football team down the field. Missouri has three receivers set to the near side. Chase Daniel that's going to go to Tony Temple and that's going to go nowhere a yard loss. You know I run that about three times and I figure out that it's not going to work because of the speed of the Nebraska defense and I got to go to something else. I got to find a different way to run the football against this fast Nebraska football team. How about if we give it to uh, Johnny Rogers. Hey, we give it to Johnny right? Rogers. How about that. Two. Two Heisman Trophy winners. The first one ever in Nebraska. Johnny great to see you. All right you. Gary thank you. How are you. I'm very well yourself. I'm doing just great. Thank you. You got to be celebrating this uh, I am celebrating. We were kind of concerned here but uh, seems like we're right on track up to midfield down to the 40 yard line and taken oh. to the 32 yard line and that is what they needed Missouri needed the long run Alexander Denario Alexander a 41 yard completion from Chase Daniel and that's what we talked about challenging the Nebraska football team down the field that's what Oklahoma State did last week they challenged this Cornhusker team down the field that's what Chase Daniel has got to do here's Chase Daniel out of the shotgun looking deep down the sideline towards the end zone incomplete at the five yard line William Franklin was the intended receiver Johnny Rogers it was a Three yards on a cloud of dust football. The history of Nebraska. We've seen a change in the in the program. What do you think? Well, I think we're going in the right direction. We've had uh, uh, the offense that we had before. Really, we couldn't uh, recruit all over the country. Now we have a pro style offense, and we're able to move the ball on a, on a split second and, and score more points and create a lot more excitement to the game. They have done that here. Missouri has got some room, and down to the 22 yard line. Tony Temple. On the carry, that will be just shy of the first down. You're, uh, you were out last night signing autographs. Tell us about your book. Well, I have a book uh, called An Era of Greatness. It's uh, a history book for the history, we call it, of Nebraska football. It's pretty much a guide throughout from 1890 all the way up to 1972, emphasizing the 69 and 72 teams. Good for you. You had a couple of national championships here, the first for Nebraska back in the 70s. Daniel going down the line making some changes here. This is a third down and one. Third and one. They need that first down and they're going to get it and more. Take it inside the 15 down to about the 13 yard line an eight yard gain and Tony Temple now getting some playing time as Shanley moved in to put the hit on him. Well tell us a little bit about playing for coach Don Devaney and, and how that error was for you back Back in the day, Bob, well, it, De it, Bob Devaney. I'm it sorry. was a great time. Uh, Bob Devaney was what we call a players' coach. Uh -huh. You know, we would do anything for Coach Devaney, and you could see that he really cared for the players, and he was able to bring out the best in you. And we won the big game. You did. <laughs> That's right. Chase <laughs> Daniels looking to the end zone here. Got a man open, and it's incomplete. You saw Equa Eku actually in the air do a, oh no I'm wide open and they couldn't get it. Gary you had me excited I thought he caught it. <laughs> <laughs> Gary does that. I was worried him. Gary. <laughs> <laughs> we can't be part uh, you can be part of some but we can't. <laughs> That's going to bring up uh, a long yardage here in a second down second down at 10 the first down is at the three yard line. Chase Daniel hands off nowhere to go. Tony Temple. At the line of scrimmage, Doug Enduro, Ola Doug Enduro moved in to put the hit on. Well, it's been, you know, quite exciting for us as we arrived a couple of nights ago. But then when you come into the stadium like this and you see this kind of scene, how was it for you back when you were playing? Was it this kind of kind of scene for you as well? Andre, it was a, gr it was a great experience. You know, we always said even we have big crowds at home, and we always took 25,000 people on away games. We never have an away game. Yeah. Big third down. Chase Daniel again making a play call change. One for four. 
Third down conversions. It's the option. It's pitched dangerously to Temple inside the 10 to the 9. Not nearly enough for a first down. All right, look, you go. Got to do me a favor. Sure. Stand over here. Jimmy Z, our uh, producer, can we get one more shot? How about this? How about this? I, no, wait, that's this what I want. Just give it, just I want one, both, Johnny. both of you. Just one time. Both of you. Just you one both time. do it just once. That's it right there. Two high school trophy right winners right there. Right the there. there you go. And All right, big fella. All right. All righty. Thanks a lot. Johnny, thank okay. you a million. Thank you, Pleasure Gary. to Appreciate see it. you. Okay. The great Johnny Rogers, Heisman Trophy winner. You don't often get two Heisman winners <laughs> in the uh, booth at the same time. Strike the pose, baby. And I didn't tell him I was going to do that. This is going to be a 27 yard attempt. Jeff Wolford, a sophomore, is out to do the kicking. His first year of kicking, he puts that one up, and Missouri is on the board. A 27 yarder, Jeff Wolford got it. And here in the first half, the lead is cut to 17 to 3. You put the left arm down, you put the left leg up. Jordy Rogers, Andre Ware, two Heisman. That's what the programs get built around when you have Heisman's. And there are three of them who have come out of Nebraska, and that was the first one. Johnny Rogers, the and then two national championships that he became a part of. Some of the big names in Nebraska football etched around this great memorial stadium, which has the largest crowd they have ever had. Temperature is going to be around 60, unusually warm, bright, sunny, clear day. I mean, it could not be a better afternoon for college football. Yeah, you talk about Heisman Trophy winners, Mike Rozier from here as well, Eric Krauts, and just fabulous guys. We get a chance to spend some off-season time with one another, and just good times every time we're together. And in the end zone, Lucky's going to try and run this out. He's leaving in his name, and he's right, 25, and up over the 30. To the 33 yard line Marlon Lucky who has taken over as one of four returning kicks brought down by Weatherspoon Sean Weatherspoon a 34 yard return. Thank you Mr. Duck. Now time for the Aflac trivia question. Which team was responsible for Bob Devaney and Tom Osborne's first loss at Nebraska. Same team. Tough one. Tough one. Tough one. There are only two teams on the field. I mean, come on. Tough huh? one. Tough one. Oh man, <laughs> you're giving a hint. Huh? You're misleading. Just giving everybody. a little hint there. Just giving a little hint. Always look who's on the field. You That's got a pretty it. good chance. All right, Nebraska's got the football with uh, Jackson in the backfield. A first down and ten after giving up the field goal. Jackson on the carry, and uh, he'll muscle that ahead for a couple of yards. He's been their primary carrier. His 11th carry of the games, 24 yards for Jackson. Yeah, Dave Lamont made a good point about talked about shuffling players in and out of that lineup. Well, they love to use a lot of different formation groupings to try to get mismatches all over the field that work to their advantage, and that's why they're constantly shuffling players in so you don't get accustomed to what they're doing. They want to just give you a lot of different looks. Boy, both of these offenses go to work in a hurry up over the 35 to the 40 and down to the 46-yard line. That's going to be a 10-yard gain and Jackson again on the carry this junior who had his big uh, game last week against Oklahoma State with 182 yards is carrying the football more than ever. Yeah the tight end J.B. Phillips secures the corner for Brandon Jackson here and allows him to turn it get his shoulder pads pointed north and south but I'll tell you right now they are just taking the fight to this Missouri defense lining up nothing special I'm just going to run it right at you you got to stop us. What a change in their rushing job from 106 Seventh uh, in the nation to 16th. Jackson again on the carry. He's got some room in the Missouri territory, and he'll take that down to the 43 yard line. David Overstreet, a 12 yard gain, and the Huskers offensive line opening holes. And this is exactly what they did in the first half of the football game last week against Oklahoma State. They took it, they had tremendous success, and watch the cutback here by Brandon Jackson. He sees it, that's where the cutback lane occurs. He plants the foot in the ground and sticks it, and all of a sudden he's into the second level of the defense. But against Oklahoma State, they had success like this, but they did, they went away from it in the second half, which allowed for Oklahoma State to come back and win that football game. 41 29 the final in that one and a very big loss. Nebraska has lost two in a row by the way. This will be carried uh, down to the 38 yard line. It'll be a three yard gain. Christopher on the hit and Jackson. You wouldn't know there were four eyebacks regularly used by Nebraska watching this game because Jackson is just 
moved into that number one spot now and you can see why. Yeah in the last four games he came in he had 430 yards on just 66 carries averaging over six yards a carry to go along with it. But I wouldn't be surprised if you see you see a bunch of tight ends three tight ends in maybe a little play action pass here. A second down uh, from that backfield Jackson again on the carry down to the 35 yard line Darnell Terrell and William Moore after a five yard gain. You see a lot of teams will come in they'll have those three tight ends but Bill Callahan he's not afraid to throw the football all three Josh Miller J.B. Phillips and, and Matt Herrian are all good receiving tight ends so he'll put them all in there at one time and then that's when the play action will come when you least expect it. over 100 carries on the season now for Brandon Jackson and over 600 yards gained this year as he stays in that backfield and gets hit in the backfield I mean he is nailed at the 35 and if you want to put a tackle on tape that you say kids this is how you do it yeah there form, it is nice form tackle there but I, I got a feeling Bill Callahan in this offense the way they've been running the football getting downhill they've got to go for it here you're across the 35 yard line into enemy territory go ahead and, and uh, saddle up and go for it. maybe take a time out here and talk about it fourth down and two that's exactly what they are going to do fourth down they've gone nine for twelve on the year let's see what he decides to do when we come back here in Nebraska the two hundred and eighty first consecutive sellout today it is the longest in the nation you got two quarterbacks who like to throw the football but not a lot of that in this game yeah not a lot because Missouri's not taking chances only three passes down the field on their last scoring drive but Zach Taylor it's because of the running game in Jackson and lucky that he's having the success in play action pass getting the ball down the field Nebraska sprints to the line of scrimmage they will kick now they won't kick. Just a hard count trying to draw Missouri off sides and yep. a time out here. That's what it is. Yep. They're going to take the delay of game penalty. They sprinted out, went into a punt formation, then moved Zach Taylor, the quarterback, into a passing shotgun situation, and then just waited. And uh, Missouri did not move. They will take the five yard penalty, and now they. We'll have to put the football off. The yeah, I think I would have gone for it. I mean, yeah. you're running the football and you're gashing them with Brandon Jackson and Marlon Lucky has checked in and had some success. And hey, you're on their end of the field with a 17-3 lead. Go ahead and mash the gas a little bit. Dan Titchener comes out, averaging 40 yards uh, per kick. He is a sophomore, his longest of the season at 58 yards. Tony Saunders, number 84, will be back hoping, looking for the coffin corner on the near side and. Uh, it will go out of bounds at about the two or three yard line. A tremendous position kick right there. Missouri will take over the football and see if their offense can move it. Chase Daniel, he accounts for 290 total yards, seventh best in the nation. He's got to start accounting for it here. Obviously, got to have some help from his friends out there. Handoff uh, over the 10 yard line, 15 to the 20, and out of bounds at the 25 yard line. And there's a little help from your friends, Temple, with an 18 yard gain. Let's check in with Matt Weiner in New York. Matt. All right, Gary, let's check in on Baylor and Texas Tech in this Verizon Wireless update. Sean Bell out for the season for the Bears with an ACL, so it's Blake Szymanski filling in today, and so far filling in nicely. Keeps that one, three yard touchdown, and the Bears up 14 7, 8 6, floored up on Vandy in Nashville. Boy, on the road at Texas Tech. Yeah. Looking on the first down to pass deep, and I mean deep, all the way in the midfield and over it. Three man coverage down there on William Franklin. Franklin, the primary receiver in a fly pattern that time, and Chase Daniel tried to air it out. Yeah, the first four drives from Missouri, really nothing there, 26 yards and no points to go with it. But then the 70 yard drive that ended in a field goal attempt, and he had actually Brad Ekwu in the end zone, just kind of overshot him a little bit. But now Missouri trying to get a little bit of rhythm offensively. And passing the football, four out of 10, 68 yards and an interception so far for Chase Daniel. They'll take Temple on the far side to the 30. Got some room. 35, 40, 45, and just shy of midfield. Andrew Shanley after a 23-yard gain with a man who lost his number one position as tailback for fumbling, and he's back now. 
Boy, you just see the, the speed of Tony Temple once he gets around the edge of the formation. He can cut it back right right in here or he can continue to get it outside around the corner which is what he does and then all of a sudden he's one on one with the second level of the defense speed kills looking to pass again over the middle it's intercepted at the 45 and Nebraska's got it back cutting across the far side there's room Bo Rude it takes it all the way down to the 18 yard line before he sprawls out on the field well, a big fella ran out of gas. I think got a ladder that baby back to Courtney Grigsby, the corner with a little bit more speed. But boy, the tips are just killing Chase Daniel in this Missouri offense. Remember, there were three interceptions last week. The first was a tip here. It's Adam Carricker, the defensive end, gets a paw on the football, and all of a sudden, Bo Rude changing directions Gary the big outside linebacker and he runs out of gas <laughs> which Earl Goldsmith is able to bring him down <laughs> that, that's pointing come get me <laughs> come get me <laughs> come get me I need a breather he's taking oxygen over there that's the second interception he has had on the year and uh, for Missouri it has turned into a second half of their season where they continue to shoot themselves in the foot with turnovers and Nebraska's got great field position again and you go on the road in an environment like this you cannot turn the football over now Nebraska's got a chance for another open and he ends on touchdown a 17 yard touchdown catch and I mean wide open and that is Kevin Lures number 89 I think who hauled that in yeah, and it's a nice play here the play fake you see it with the eyes and then now Zach Taylor over the top to Kevin Lures and I'm a firm believer that when you get a big turnover in a football game you go and you try to you try to strike as quickly as you possibly can the momentum has swung to your sideline what better way to end the drive than right away to a, with a touchdown pass and the extra point is up and good Teeth Biller Hunter Teeth Biller his third touchdown catch and Missouri will get the football back brought up to about the 23 yard line Jimmy Jackson for Missouri on the return but Missouri has got to hang on to the football as the turnovers couple of interceptions have cost them. He's had three catches on the year yep. and all of them have been for touchdowns. Hunter Teethfiller I'm, I'm telling you when he catches them he makes them count. He's not even on the depth <laughs> chart. <laughs> We're searching and searching and all of a sudden we find him but he's way down there. Yeah, big TD right there though to make it 24 three into the air they go and now you may get a sense of uh, not urgency but panic as Chase Daniel throws that one away it's not going to be enough they've got to hang on to the football they got plenty of time left in this game but yeah. you've got to start progressively down the field when you're in a game like this and you're trailing like Missouri you can't push the panic button because you know offensively you've got the capability to score and strike fast just want to get something started comes to the near side and there was nowhere to go as Tony Temple ran into his own blockers and it'll be a loss. The reason that happened was Nebraska was standing up those offensive linemen. Dave Lamont. Well, I'll tell you what, Andre was exactly right about Bo Root. I was about 10 feet away from him when he was tackled, and he was happy to be tackled. He was so tired coming off the field, he was the only guy in the Nebraska defensive huddle. Didn't even take off his helmet, he was so tired. However, he just defended the first pass play, and he's back in the game right now. So playing a little bit off the adrenaline and the inspiration from the sellout crowd. Third down, long yardage, third and 15 out of the shotgun looking downfield at midfield. Incomplete. The defender fell down and may have. Now he's all right. But uh, Courtney Grixby fell down, but it didn't matter. It was overthrown. And, and Missouri's possessions now are going for about 20 seconds worth of playing yeah, time. When I look at Chase Daniel right now, it kind of concerns me. You look at his body language, looks like he's starting to press a little bit and trying to force some things down the field. And that's not the way to get back in a football game like this on the road. You've got to score. You know, go ahead and eat up a little time. Take some time driving the football because you've got an entire second half to get yourself back in this football game. 
it. Time of possession for Missouri doesn't matter. Yep. They score so quickly. Adam Crossett comes out to do the kicking. Does so off the side of his foot. It'll be handled at the 40 by Grixby to the 45 midfield and into Missouri territory. Nebraska's had great starting positions. 42 yard kick, 12 yard return. Affleck. Our Aflac trivia question which team responsible for Bob Devaney and Tom Osborne's? Both of them, their first losses in Nebraska, and the answer is the other team on the field today, Missouri, 62 and 73. Black and gold. They did it then, but they are not doing it here today, as the offense for Missouri's not been able to stay on the field, and uh, every turnover has cost them Missouri points. Man, we talked to Gary Pinkle, and we mentioned it a little bit earlier at the top that he wanted to run the football, maybe take some pressure off Chase Daniels. But when your best weapon is the quarterback throwing the football, he may be pressing the issue a little bit too much offensively, trying to run the football. And Nebraska will try and run it midfield, and a big effort, second effort to the 42. That's Marlon Lucky, the sophomore, in a seven yard gain Dave Lamont well Gary when you have a hundred meetings you're going to have some interesting ones along the line you know that Nebraska's 400th 600th and 900th games in their career against Missouri the team that beat Bob Devaney before his team's on a 32 game win streak in the early 70s Missouri the first Nebraska overtime game ever you're following along at home with this I understand so the coincidences are many many and in fact 1962 when their 281 sellout streak yeah you answered that one too didn't you guys back to you and looking <laughs> into that far corner tossing it as far as he can at the 20 it is caught it is caught at the 20 yard line Nate Smith on a 22 yard reception Swift I think that's about as far as Zach Taylor could throw the football. Well, I tell you what, nice corner route, and he throws it from one hash mark all the way across the field to the other. And a lot of defensive coordinators will just kind of play three deep coverage on that side of the field, not thinking that a quarterback's arm is strong enough to make that throw. Zach Taylor certainly hummed that one in there. That was a long toss by Taylor. 229 yards a game passing for Zach Taylor. And they've got another first down and 10 towards the end zone. It is incomplete. Just batted away by Massey. Brandon Massey, the senior. There was a receiver open behind him, but the ball was in front of Massey. Todd yeah. Peterson was open. Yeah, Massey had started some this year and lost his position to William Moore, who the coaches feel is one of the better athletes on this football team. Now it's more an overstreet playing in the secondary. And they're against the pass or against that formation. They've got Brandon Massey in there. He's got two interceptions on the season. I'm kind of surprised he didn't come up with that one. They could have used that one. Three interceptions and 243 pass attempts. Zach Taylor, he's seven for 12, two TDs today and 120 yards. They'll run that one or at least try to straight ahead. Maybe a yard gain right at the 20 yard line on the stop. And that's more to set up this passing game than anything else right there yeah. and it brings up a third and long yardage and when you're having that success running the football the play action passes are there they love to run behind Matt Slauson the big right tackle and uh, you know because he's a big physical guy he can play both guard and tackle you know he's in the game on most running plays on that side of the field five for seven for third down conversions for Nebraska the shovel pass on this third down will not be enough. As uh, Hood moved in, had been out three weeks with a broken foot back in last week, hits Jackson, stops him, field goal attempt. Well, you hear me say all the time or in a lot of ball games that there are small wins in a ball game. And for Missouri, just to hold to a field goal attempt in this ball game or in this possession is a small win defensively for the Missouri Tigers. Well, let's see if they can get it as uh, Congdon will come on. He made a 40 earlier in the game. This is a 33 yarder. Jack. Jake uh, Westrother on the hold. The kick is up, and it is good. So Condon's got a couple of field goals today. He has now gone five for seven on the season, and Nebraska's getting points out of virtually every time they hang on, 27 to three. Yeah, and they're getting the points off turnovers by this Missouri football team. You see here the tip pass, character with the interception, and it's going to result in a touchdown pass to Maurice Purify in the corner. Then once again, a, an interception here by Bo Rude, and then it results in a touchdown pass. So, so boy, we used to turn the football over against 
this Nebraska defense or this Nebraska football team, they make you pay. They go down and they get points and they get them in a hurry. There's the turnover story right there. One takeaway from Missouri, no points off it. Nebraska's had two on the interceptions. They've scored touchdowns. Yeah, and both passes that, that were tips, you know, tips, and then the Nebraska goes down. They start running the football and. And they get down close and it's Zach Taylor to a receiver and then a tight end and he's doing a fabulous job of just spreading the football around where it kind of keeps you off balance even in the passing game. So Missouri is going to get the football goal Smith will be standing back at the four yard line trying to get some field position and spins away and gets it up to about the 20 yard line where Missouri will take over first and ten. So Missouri let's see what their offense can do here coming up on our capital halftime show John Craig and Doug will be along with highlights from the early action today discuss how Louisville's win on Thursday night over West Virginia is going to affect the BCS that is all coming up. Well, you know, how does Louisville you know, just jump to third. I don't know <laughs> Florida's been sitting there. Yeah. And uh, they're taking care of business. Well, they may not jump to third. Well, that not. one over the middle at the 20 yard line line of scrimmage and uh, maybe a gain of three on that as Tommy Saunders the walk on who earned a scholarship a sophomore receiver called that one in. Well it would make a huge difference in this football game Missouri if they're able to get some points on this drive got a, a, a little better sense of urgency here a lot of clock running. Well they got 37 seconds left to go here in the first half Chase Daniel out of the backfield they got to get it down in a hurry at the 30 yard line caught carried up to the 35 Equa Eku on the carry that'll be a 13 yard gain. The uh, clock will stop till they get the chains down there. They need to get uh, to field goal range here at least as they started at their own 20 yard line. They've got timeouts. In fact, they have all three of their timeouts left here in the half. Daniel again under the rush, sideline pass, caught out of bounds. No, it's a reception. The Great catch driven out by the defender as William Franklin, their leading receiver with 84 catches. That one's good for 11. Yeah, the official using his judgment that Will Franklin would have come down with a foot in bounds had it not been for the contact. So that's going to result in another Missouri first down. And now all of a sudden, challenging down the field, they're able to complete passes. Now you're doing this, of course, in the final minute, and Missouri's going to use one of their three timeouts, I believe. Nope, they're going to review, going to review it. it. Every play, of course, is reviewed upstairs in the replay booth. The Big 12 replays this year, 86 have been stopped for a review. 21 were coach challenges. I mean, Only here. 17 overturned. The toe is I mean, it, it's it. That one's going to be close, and I'm not sure if there is enough. It looks like it's down there, and it taps maybe once or twice. I don't think there's going to be enough evidence to to. Over, overrule the call. Has to be indisputable sure. evidence on the replay that the call on the field was wrong in order to overturn it. Certainly doesn't look like there's indisputable. Yeah, now all of a sudden you get Chase Daniel making throws down the field where he's comfortable instead of screening and underneath and little pop passes. Go ahead and challenge this Nebraska defense because what happens if you're not precise, you get the tips, the tips result in the interceptions, and Nebraska cashing them in for touchdowns. After review, After review, the pass is complete. Pass is complete. The play is confirmed. There you go. And uh, for Missouri, also a break there. They didn't have to use their timeout, but they got a chance to go to the sideline and discuss how they want to run this. They've only got 20 seconds left to go. Missouri trailing 27 to 3 as we approach the half. And not quite sure why they're saving those three timeouts. Me either. Chase Daniel out of the shotgun. Three receivers on the wide side, two to the near side. Only four down linemen here for Nebraska. Daniel still chased out of the pocket. Zone 35 gets it into the middle of the field at the 40 yard line. Clock still ticking. That is Alexander on the reception at the 35 36 yard line, an 18 yard gain, and now they want that timeout. Yeah, I definitely take the timeout here. There's no Missouri. need to rush it. First charged timeout. They still have a uh, 10 seconds. Now we were talking about the BCS standings the effect of today's games and of Thursday's game in particular our ESPNU Allstate standings review. Keep in mind things are going to change here come next week. Yeah this one right here West Virginia is going to go away and they're going to drop down and you may get Louisville who jumps up a little bit. And uh, and maybe ahead of Florida a one loss Florida team but a lot of people feel like Florida playing in that SEC. Will uh, will be able to maintain 
that position and maybe play the winner of uh, Ohio State and Michigan no, for the I national championship. I'm still taking the the tact that if it goes down to those two teams Ohio State Michigan undefeated right that they're still going to be one and two no matter who wins that game yeah, you really think so I really I think mean, so. you know it may be so such a public outcry though to have someone different or to drop them down but I couldn't agree with you more I mean if it's the best two teams playing especially in a close football game at the end hey who knows who's we may the best get a one loss team right now uh, I got to think it's Florida. I got to think See, it's Florida. And I say if there's a one-loss team between Ohio State and Michigan, that's the best one-loss team. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But you're the you Heisman got, winner, you got a point. Not. <laughs> you got a point there. Absolutely. All right, time running out here. Let's see whether or not the uh, Missouri team, I only got 10 seconds. You've really got to watch this clock as they want to at least get a field goal out of this. A first down and 10. Daniel to the sideline, down the sideline, throws it away incomplete. Double coverage on the far side. Daniel did not have anybody open. And when he saw that, he just let it go. William Franklin, their primary receiver, number three. The clock is down to six seconds. And uh, did not get to the position they needed for a decent field goal attempt. They're going to I mean to try it anyway here. Jeff Warford coming out. His longest is 44 yards. This attempt is going to be more than that. And a timeout is going to be taken by Nebraska. They want Wolford to have an opportunity to think about this before he tries to launch a new career field goal mark for himself. Yeah, Jeff Wolford, he's got the wind to his back, so it's going to help him a little bit. Just want to get it in the air and start it between the goalposts. But he kicked his longest one against Ohio, and that was the fourth game of the season from 44 yards. I want to remind you, coming up, ABC will take you to Atlanta, where the PGA Tour's top money winners battle in the season-ending Tour Championship presented by Coca-Cola. Live third-round coverage of the Tour Championship next right here on ABC. Yeah, Adam Scott, Joe Durant, they lead that one and tee off here in about half an hour. So we'll, uh, we'll see. It'll be a fantastic finish. Husker. And there are over 85,000 of them here in the new record-setting crowd on hand for this game. Yeah, they started getting ready last night in the hotel. Yes, they did. <laughs> and that uh, it revved up pretty good. Based on that, I'd say they're ready. Uh, they are hoping because, as we said, this team, the team that wins this game, will have all but locked up this division of the Big 12. Yeah, just two games remaining in the conference for him, and, and uh, it will certainly give him a stronghold yep. going down the stretch. He has kicked the 26 yarder. This one is going to be 54 yards. Jeff Wolfert, who came to Missouri as a member of the swim team as a diver, decided he wanted to kick. Does he still feel that way? It is up, and it is. Jeff Wolford for the 54 yarder that just had enough to get over what he probably viewed as the diving board. Boy, he shaped that baby in there just like a nice little pitching wedge and had just enough on it for it to check up on the green, and it's good. So the sophomore celebrates, and look, that is a big field goal coming at the half to make it 27 to 6. Coming up next, back to our New York studios, John, Craig, and Doug coming up. That will be right after these messages, our Capital One halftime. back everybody Nebraska's homecoming so far very successful with that 27 to 6 lead and this has been the story of this game the turnovers by Missouri interceptions have resulted in the touchdowns Zach Taylor putting them in welcome back I'm Gary Thorne with Andre Ware Missouri's got to get it going here if they're going to get in this football game. yeah they've got to challenge Nebraska down the field you saw at the end of the first half when Chase Daniels started to have some success they were throwing the football down the field to get away from the screen passes underneath the little bubble screens and then trying to run uh, out to the perimeter of the defense go right at them and, and just basically challenge them in the second half first what they've got to do though is get the football back because they chose to uh, Missouri had the football to start the football game so Nebraska's got that offense out there again yeah and you know what once they get the football go ahead and, and convert some third downs when you get it they're only one yeah. of six on third downs, so they've got to do a better job in that department as well total yardage evened up with that last drive by Missouri 242 
taken by Nebraska 178 for Missouri you see the average field position start much better for Nebraska and all oh, those turnovers Missouri in the two losses they've had their turnover margin has been a minus five in the games they've won seven of them it's been a plus six and in this one two turnovers two opposing touchdowns are a minus one. We are ready to go. This is going into the end zone. Lucky is there, and that's where he will down it. Nebraska's got it. We'll check in with Dave Lamont. Dave. Well, I talked to a surprisingly upbeat Gary Pinkle coming out of the dressing room, and he said, look, stranger things have happened. We can do this, but we got to start doing it one score at a time. And he admits that the way his defense is played plays exactly in Nebraska's hands. They pound the ball and then use the play-action passes, and they're up by 21 points. Bill Callahan was a little bit more reserved walking off the field. I said, is that about as good a half as you played all year? He says, yeah, you could say that collectively. When I asked him, are you going to make any changes? He says, no. Back to you. When you got that kind of a lead, if you're the Huskers, you just keep on going. Yeah, and, and that's, uh, that's what, what they, they did uh, last week against Oklahoma State. Yeah. Ran the football well and got away from it. Jackson, who's had a very big day, gets away to the 30-yard line, and that's going to be enough for a first down. And 11-yard gain for Brandon Jackson, who has carried the football 17 times in this game, has picked up. 67 yards. Right. There's a total this. offense. Yeah. See what he's done against Missouri. Yeah, he's right there with them pretty much alone and just total offense for Brandon Jackson. And they like him. Randy Jordan, their running back coach, really, really likes this kid. You could tell they talked with one another yesterday and I saw them together. They really have a good player coach relationship. Zach Taylor, a first down and 10 for Nebraska, just underway here in the second half. They use that eye back. Second man through and up to about uh, the line of scrimmage, and that's going to be it. Jackson started out that first half carrying the football virtually every time and he's doing the same here our Pacific Life game summary. Yeah you look at it the score and and part of the reasons the two turnovers right here by Missouri and it resulted in the 14 points time of possession it really doesn't factor in for Missouri because they score so fast they can get themselves back in this football game but they certainly need to take care of the football. Yep and they've not been able to do that so far in this game now their defense is going to try and get it back keep in mind uh, this uh, Missouri defense against the rush 49th in the nation 27th against the pass and here it's going to be a look downfield and a big rush they'll get it out to the back at the 40 yard line and another first down Brandon Jackson that's where the rest of the yardage rim has come from. That's his third reception. He gets 11 on that. He's had three receptions for 61 yards. Yeah, we spoke with Jay Norvell, the offensive coordinator this year. And he talked the way he described Zach Taylor was just the intangibles. He's got all the intangibles. And on that play, he had a lot of pressure flushed out of the pocket by Xavier Jackson. But he knew exactly where Brandon Jackson was located and threw him the football in space and allowed for him to work his way to the first down. Nine out of 14 in the passing department now for the quarterback, Zach Taylor. Here's senior Nebraska moving the football again. They come to the near side. Jackson gets spun around. And no gain. He is stopped at the line of scrimmage. This Missouri defense has obviously spent a ton of time out there on the field. And uh, they need to get off here in the second half. Yeah, you look at it, Brandon Jackson working inside between the tackles here. And it looks like this ball, it may come out a little bit, but it was clearly he was on the ground. Now we'll uh, get a second down in long yardage. Lucky is coming to the backfield. A lot of movement here. Nebraska keeps that. Opposing defense guessing. And they'll be going to Lucky. He will not get the first down. Takes it up to about the 46 yard line. A gain of four. Marlon Lucky, the sophomore, he has had uh, rushing wise four carries under 20 yards in the gain department today. Well, he's going to be a big time player. You talk about just speed and size and explosiveness. You're describing Marlon Lucky. When he's in the open field, boy, he is a, a load to get on the ground. And here's where Nebraska got it done in that first half. Five out of eight on third down conversions. They've got another third down here, a third down and a six. Taylor looking. They screen it to Lucky to midfield, and he's got the first down. Takes it into Missouri territory up to the 46 yard line. That's a gain of eight. Lorenzo Williams put the hit on. And if you're looking at this play, you watch Marlon Lucky. What makes the play is he doesn't spend any time 
pitter-patting around or right there. Just get north and south in a hurry. Smells the first down marker, and he gets north and south, and that's what allows him to pick up the first down. A lot of young backs, they sit back there, they try to throw a lot of moves, make a lot of people miss. That guy there, smart with the football, get north and south in a hurry. Rush yardage almost being doubled now by Nebraska against Missouri. Another first down, first and ten. They are in Missouri territory. The handoff straight ahead, and the carry for maybe a yard. Good work by the interior line, Jaron Baston on the hit. Let's check in again with Matt Weiner in New York. All right, Gary, here's a vote for the Pontiac game-changing performance of the day. Northwestern in Iowa City, up 14-0. Drew Tate at the goal line, but he's picked off by Brendan Smith as the Wildcats protect that 14-0 lead. To vote for your Pontiac game-changing performance, log on to ESPN.com, type in keyword Pontiac. Northwestern giving it all they can handle today. Only one. Here's Zach Taylor on the second down. They go to the first man through. That uh, is going to be carried up to the 40 yard line again. That is lucky. And he's going to gain seven on that. Shy of the first down. Marcus Bacon, their leading tackler, on the hit. Yeah, he was converted from safety and moved him down the linebacker to get some more speed on the football field. He lead, led him in tackles coming into this game with 81. One heck of a football player. He's named the team's most improved linebacker in the spring. And here comes the Nebraska shuttle. They wait till the last minute. They've got eight guys gathered around Bill Callahan. Three or four of them will come on the field at the last minute, and then they hurry up into the offense, trying to catch Missouri, trying to prevent Missouri from seeing who's actually out there. Jackson is in the backfield. He's got the football. He's not going to get to the first down marker. But he's mighty close on the second effort. A gain of three for Jackson. It looked like he was going to be taken down at the line of scrimmage, but Brandon Massey couldn't hold on to him. Well, watch the. I mean, right here, you're just going to see just pure determination. They get a crack back block by Nate Swift, which kind of secures the corner a little bit. Now it's just leg drive and shoulder pads pointed north and south. Nebraska electing to go for it here. On fourth downs, nine out of 12 on fourth down conversions, the best in the Big 12 in that department. Bill Callahan's going to go for it here. A fourth down and one. Dane Todd, 41, the big fullback. Uh, they roll it to the right. They're going to go in the air. It is incomplete. He will not want to see that again. J.B. Phillips with nobody remotely close to him. And it. now J.B. Phillips is the first thing he's thinking is, come on, defense, hold him. But right now, you see right here, Zach Taylor out on the edge and wide open, not a jersey behind J.B. Phillips, who does a heck of a job of getting himself open. They sell the run. He's so wide open. Oh, my goodness. He is the H back who had a first down but couldn't hang on to it, so they do not convert on fourth. Missouri gets the football back. You're watching ESPN's College Football on ABC. Missouri and Nebraska are presented by Best Buy. Nebraska's had the day of it on their homecoming, but they just turned that ball over on fourth down when they could not convert. Missouri's got it first down and 10. And a lot of room up to the 40 yard line, 45 midfield, and into Nebraska territory. Chase Daniel, a 17 yard gain, and maybe, maybe that failed fourth down conversion is, turn. The, is the break. And it might actually turn this football game around, but I'll tell you what. Chase Daniels going to have to start taking advantage of some uncovered receivers. Nothing in front of the receiver, Denaro Alexander, right there parked in the slot. Out of the shotgun. There's a mix up. What kind of a handoff was that to Tony Temple? And you know, you're going to find it hard to run the football because Nebraska wants to stop you. They're so fast defensively that you can't get out on the edge. You start popping that open slot receiver that's just sitting there uncovered. Actually, it's Martin Rucker, who's the big tight end. They get That'll give you five yards. It's just an extended handoff. Get him the football and loosen up that Nebraska defense. What was that? Chase Daniel ran into his own man, Tony Temple, that time. Brings up a second down and a 10. Daniel looking over the middle. That is caught. A bullet. And that'll be at the 35 yard line. Enough for a first down. 10 yard gain. We've talked about Martin Rucker and Chase Kopp and their great tight ends who have all kinds of career numbers receiving, but they haven't been much in this game. Yeah, you see the slant pattern right here, waiting on him to get to the second window. Doesn't hit him right out of his break. He waits until he clears the linebacker and then delivers the football. Averaging 8.9 yards a catch, Martin Rucker got that one. Missouri driving here, first down and 10. 
in the pocket downfield. That's going to be incomplete. Had a chance on William Franklin, but not a well thrown ball by Chase Daniels. Yeah, Brad Ekwu, the uh, slot receiver to that side, actually came open. And uh, you'll see him get hit in the head right here. Right here, Chase Daniel gets hit in the head, and that's a blow to the head. That's a yeah. penalty. And it went uncalled. And this will bring up a second down and 10. On the handoff, a lot of room to the 25 and gets to the 21 yard line. Tony Temple. Temple, before Green could bring him down, Thierry Green after a 14 yard gain. Well, just, just store it in the back of your memory. That that drop pass by J.B. Phillips, the tight end on fourth down and short for Nebraska. And now all of a sudden, Missouri in a little rhythm moving the football. They are doing that both in the air and on the ground. Temple's in the backfield. They come around to the near side, found some room to the 15 yard line and out of bounds. Almost got his neck taken off by Green again. That's going to be a six yard gain. And the fury of Mr. Temple, who lost his starting role, has showed a few times in this game. Yeah, watch the block by Martin Rucker, the tight end, on the left side of the formation here for Missouri, which is going to allow, he's going to come into your screen, but it allows for Tony Temple. Right there is where the, that secures enough to allow Tony Temple to turn the corner. Temple's got 79 yards on 12 carries, circling where? Daniel Chase, 25, 20, going to carry it. Ooh! Put his head down, and fortunately for him, got over the defender to the 10 yard line. That was Courtney Grixby. It'll be a four yard gain for Daniel, who went into that head first. You wonder why he's had so much success winning football games. This type of attitude right here. I'm going to lay it all on the line for my football team to pick it up. Just listen to it. Well, that's taking it on right there, head first. I'm, I'm going to get the first down. All right, first down and 10. They hand off the Temple through the middle, and he's not going any further than that 10 yard line. Maybe a gain of one. Temple coming back into the middle, and that time just got stood up by the linebackers of Nebraska. Missouri with a chance to get back into this football game if they can get a touchdown here in the third quarter. Nebraska has not allowed an opponent to score on the second half opening drive all year long. Eight plays, 53 yards. But a big play here on second down. Second down and goal. Temple's in the backfield. Temple with the carry. Temple up to the five yard line. Found a little room for four that time. Steinkeller moved in and put the hit on. All right, field goes nice, but touchdown is even better for Missouri. And you got to be thinking that way, it's trailing by 21 points. And this will pull you close in a hurry. They've only been, they've only had the ball going on about three minutes on this current drive. But well, they, we talked about it. They can score fast and get themselves back in this football game in a hurry. All right, they've got a score here. They're on the six yard line. It is third down. Goldsmith. Well, keep an eye out for the quarterback draw. Nobody in the middle of the field. Nobody. They dump it back into the middle of the Temple. Touchdown! And that is Martin Rucker who came back across the middle. Martin Rucker, the tight end, gets the touchdown for Missouri. Yeah, a couple of ways to get to it. You could have just run the quarterback draw and block it up front with the offensive line but then Rucker comes underneath there's no one there which allows him to get himself into the end zone excellent play call on the part of Dave Christensen the offensive coordinator for Missouri and keep in mind how all this started it was when Nebraska tried on a fourth down conversion for the first down a receiver couldn't handle it ended up turning the ball over Missouri takes it down the field Jeff Wolford will come on for the extra point it is up and uh, it is good. And Missouri gets a vitally important touchdown to put themselves back into the football game for Rucker, his fourth touchdown catch of the season. 27 13. Ready to go in this crowd as quieted down at Nebraska now as Missouri gets on the board. 27 13, and you know this 
house filled with Reds thinking about last week. Oh, absolutely. And uh, they don't want to go away from what got him got him the lead in this football game. They certainly did it last week. I wouldn't think Bill Callahan would make that, that mistake two weeks in a row. Lucky's got it from the one yard line, and uh, he will be brought down inside the 15. They'll mark it at about the 12. Take a look at our Best Buy playbook. Now we're going to pull up the screen pass. I'm thinking quarterback draw here where you're going to have Chase Daniel in one of the two alleys, but Ryan Madison's going to kick out here. The receiver, Kaufman's going to come here, the tight end, and then they're going to hit Mark, Mark Rucker underneath on the screen pass, and it's blocked up just fine. Nobody in the middle of the field. Get your shoulders pointed north and south and into the end zone. Nebraska's loss last week came against Oklahoma State. They had the lead at the half. It was the first time under a Bill Callahan team here at Nebraska yeah. that they had lost a game where they had the lead at the half. Now their offense back to work. Brandon Jackson will be in the backfield on the carry near side. 15 20 what a day he is having it'll be a five yard gain for Jackson and we'll check in with Dave Lamont Gary as you might guess emotions running high on the Missouri bench Chase Daniel just walked up and down the U shaped area where the offense is gathered and went to everybody and said you see how easy that was Do you see how easy that was we can do this one play at a time before he pumped up everybody slap five with Tony Temple all of a sudden this bench is paying attention to everything that's going on on the field and even the special teams this is an eager bunch right now they really believe they can win well, defense giving up a little bit too much on first yeah. down though yep they've got to get this football back now in a hurry and not let Nebraska just continue to drive it the come around is up to the 20 and a great one on one tackle none only a three yard gain as Darnell Terrell the junior cornerback had a one on one hit. Yeah he's a big physical corner out of St. Louis Missouri at 6 3 205 what a heck of an open field tackle but Brandon Massey gets himself out of position flying up from the safety position and you got outside contain the other only thing outside of you is the corner deep down the field and it's a good thing Darnell Terrell recognized the end around and was able to help out six out of ten and third down conversions a third down and two for Nebraska Jackson in the backfield Zach Taylor under center only one receiver out they're going to go power left Jackson's got the first down 30 and driven out of bounds at about the 32. Diedrich Harrington over there to drive him out. And that's going to be counted as a nine yard gain. Yeah, watch the block by Dane Todd, the fullback here around the edge. And right here is where you're going to get the block. Just chopping trees down along the way, which provides great running room for Brandon Jackson. Dane Todd, not only a great blocker, he's an academic All American and only one of 11 Division I players awarded the Good Works Team Award for his efforts off the field and charity around the campus. Yeah, 4.0 student. Not bad. Dane Todd, congratulations. It is a first down. Down and a 10. Taylor, they go far side, and everybody is in there in white. That'll depend on the marking how much of a loss Lucky is thrown for. But uh, the Missouri defense and almost everybody there that time as the linemen slid down to the right. And yeah, Matt Aberflew is the defensive coordinator for Missouri getting more bodies around the line of scrimmage. And basically you've got to play your area of the field. You cannot get yourself out of position. Brandon Massey did a couple of plays ago. They paid for it with a big run and luckily Darnell Terrell was there to make a stop. But you're going to have those guys around the line of scrimmage. That's going to create man to man on the outside with those receivers. And look for Zach Taylor to kind of starts spinning that ball out wide. See what he does here in a second down and long yardage after that loss of one second down and 11 lucky in the backfield out of the shotgun Taylor looking deep didn't have anybody but look at the time he's got brings it to the near side and uh, throws it didn't really throw it away took a chance on a sideline pass that ends up being incomplete Terrence Nunn was the intended receiver and Taylor had half the day on that one. Time permitting, we invite you to stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Postgame Report. Scores and highlights, John Craig and Doug will be in New York to bring it to you. Gary Thorne, Andre Ware upstairs here watching this one. Dave Lamont down at field level. Largest crowd ever, Memorial Stadium in Nebraska for their homecoming. And uh, so far, the Red have the lead, but in an area they don't want to be in third down and long they said they wanted to live in third down and five which they could still run or pass lucky in the backfield it's going to go to him at the 30 yard line trying to get the first down territory does midfield and into missouri territory a huge play harrington got to him but a 24 yard gain for lucky Boy, he left david overstreet 
the safety and they really like David Overstreet just left him sitting there gave him a move outside stuck the foot in the ground and changed directions and then all of a sudden he was off to the first down marker you'll see it here nice little swing pattern and that's a tough throw between the arms of a defender but then you're out in the open space and you see him stick the foot in the ground against David Overstreet and get me some more. What a job they've done in third down conversions on the season only 46 percent but eight out of 12. Yeah that's 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 moving the change here. Those are big plays a first down at 10 in Missouri territory Nebraska lucky on the carry and uh, he will be brought down at about the 38 after a four yard gain that is David Overstreet who takes him down. What a luxury to have a guy like Marlon Lucky who's who started the season and Brandon Jackson's come in and he's had one heck of an afternoon but then they go back to Lucky and Spell Jackson, and now all of a sudden you just keep two really fresh young running backs going all throughout the afternoon. That's that wears on a defense. You've got Jackson averaging on the year 6.3 per carry. You've got Lucky averaging 5.9. And they are both working in this game. A second down and a six. They look again into the backfield. That is Jackson trying to find some blockers. There weren't many. He will gain maybe a yard on the play. Well, you saw the, the block a couple of plays ago by Dane Todd and when they offset the fullback the majority of the time that's where the Nebraska is going to run the football behind Dane Todd he'll offset left he'll offset right but when he's in the football game they're going to check him out on third down and long here but once they offset him that's usually about 80 percent of the time that's who they're going to run behind because he's such a fierce ferocious block lead blocker only a minute 30 left to go here in this first half the third quarter of the Nebraska looking for the first down again there's another big third down play this one is going to be complete it doesn't look like it's enough for a first down Boy, that's going to be close he's going to get a generous spot none on the reception and it depends on where it is all slant routes right here you inside position by the nickelback Cornelius Brown and it's still Terrence Nunn is they still able to get inside gave him a nice little move on the outside set him up that way and came right underneath and Zach Taylor well what timing on the throw and based on this spot it may well be that they're going to get this first down Bill Callahan third season for the Cornhuskers 19 and 13 coming into this game went to a Super Bowl of course in Oakland and there you see that yellow line that only we can see and he got it. Yeah. So they get the first down not what Gary Pinkle wanted to see in the other sideline now look at all the players over there watch this this is what goes on at every play Zach Taylor got a surrounded by people they send out a group another group goes running off yeah, and tight they, ends fullbacks everybody yeah. <laughs> joining in the fun that's the way it's been so for the defense in this case Missouri as you're trying to pick up who's in the game tenth play coming on this drive Jackson to go two yard gain just shy of the 30 Harrington again moved in on the hit Dave Lamont Dave Todd yesterday you already mentioned his academic credentials and he said you know what this is complicated now this is an academic guy telling us all this but he admitted that it's a lot better now than it was a year or two ago and they were struggling to understand this system and getting used to all the ins and outs and all the intricacies and all the substitutions that we focused on today so if an academic All-American and a guy with a perfect grade point average is having a tough time with it it's got to be tough on everybody yeah and it's and it's the verbiage it's just basically we're talking to Zach Taylor yesterday he said man just learning Thanks to get the me. play call in the huddle was a chore and uh, second down long yardage again they go to Jackson out of that backfield Over. he will take it down uh, to about the 26 yard line a four yard gain they keep pounding away and the clock's going to expire here in the third so Nebraska with a lead wanting to keep the football keep a drive going after the Missouri touchdown they have been able to do that here Bill Callahan's club and the big red applauding only three seconds left to go and he wanted to make sure they did not move the football again. So only one quarter left to go and a chance to put yourself in a great position for the Big 12 championship game. And right now Nebraska's got the lead. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. the fans of Nebraska for this homecoming so far about a lot to cheer about 27 13 Missouri last uh, couple of possessions they've been able to score Nebraska's got the football now and uh, five 
46. Time of the drive so far. And they've still got it in their hands inside the 30, and flags go down. Probably a holding call coming here as Lucky uh, driven out of bounds. That or an, or an illegal crackback block because they've been using that. J.B. Phillips came in motion, and that may be what the call is here. Holding. You're right. 85 offense. Yeah. Ten yard penalty. Previous spot. But it was J.B. Phillips. Yeah. I knew it. You know he was coming in. He's been cracking down inside, and and you you look at it and. Just a guy trying to slip off a block and he may have gotten just a, a hair bit too much of the jersey. But that's a big down for Missouri. Back them up and now you need to stop them. They've had the football in Nebraska 13 minutes longer than uh, than the Missouri. We said it doesn't matter with time of possession. But guess what? You got to get your hands on it yeah. at some point to go down and score some points. So it's a big stop for Missouri. Big penalty. We've only had four penalties combined in this game. That may be the biggest one of all if Missouri in fact can hold here. Brandon Jackson checks into the backfield a third down and 14 nine out of 13 in the conversion department for Nebraska. Zach Taylor will work out of the shotgun looking downfield into the corner pushing shoving caught at the two yard line. Nate Swick with a tremendous catch as Zach Taylor put it in the pocket for a 34 yard gain. What a catch and throw. I mean, that's going up, and sometimes guys aren't open, but you just have to depend on them to make a play for you. Tremendous coverage right here by Cornelius Brown. I mean, blanketed. And all of a sudden, Nate Swift comes up with that reception. Go up, climb the ladder, catch it at its highest point, and he gets it put away before he lands on the ground. I mean, that one right there, just trusting your receiver. You know the body language of guys. You've worked all offseason with them all through summer camp, and then that one is just trust from Zach Taylor and Nate Swift. And Cornelius Brown, the defender, is down on the field, being helped up while they are getting him off the field. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Well, you see right here just the time of possession of possessing the football a little longer Nebraska then Missouri not allowing that high powered offense to get itself going we saw it on the last drive they were able to go down and punch it in the end zone a yards after the catch 120 from Nebraska that's unbelievable what a big catch for the first down another third down conversion Jackson on the carry conversion against this Missouri defense right when it looked like Missouri was going to have a chance to get it back right, and it's been the third down conversion conversions for Nebraska which allows for Brandon Jackson to get himself into the end zone nice throw and catch on the part of Zach Taylor and Nate Swift to set up this touchdown run but Brandon Jackson Boy, I tell you, they're always pointed north and south. No yep. pitter pat, no stutter step. Diamond puts that one up, and it is good. So Nebraska answers with a 13 play, 85 yard drive that took six minutes, extends their lead 34 13. Nebraska piling up the points here. You see Jackson and Lucky, two primary running backs there. 34 14. This is the 13, rather, the most points surrendered by Missouri this season. Missouri will get the football back as Goldsmith goes back and will have to stay right there. So, with time running down, Missouri will see if they can get this ball moving in the air when we come back to Nebraska. Well, they're putting themselves. Nebraska is in a position to answer that question about a championship because if they win this game, they're probably going to take the Northern Division and go against the South Division winner, who just may be Texas. Texas 5 0 right now. The the well, yeah, with a rematch. That'll be taken up to the 20. No game. Missouri's got to get it going. Let's check in on an injury, Dave. Gary Cornelius Brown's got a problem with his left shoulder and it's definitely having a hard time with range of motion but the trainers tell me he should be able to return also during the timeout Martin Rucker came over had his left foot looked at he is back on the field the trainer said hey, you know what we'll fix you after the game right. Chase Daniel a quarterback for in Missouri trying to put the ball in the air here on a second down and it'll be caught at the 25 yard line that is Jason Ray a junior receiver five yard gain. 
I tell you, you know, it's kind of surprising that they came out running the football with Tony Temple on this drive. They need to score. They need to get one of the. They need to have one of those classic Missouri drives where it's no more than two minutes and they punch one into the end zone. Jared Perry, wide receiver, checks into the game. They've got five receivers out there on a big third down and four. They have got to get a first down. Even here, they'll have to take a couple of downs to try for it. Caught at the 31 yard line. He tried to get in first down territory. Six yard gain, Alexander. Yeah, he just went out and hooked at the first down mark. And you know what? The, the uh, linebacker's trying to stay inside to protect. First down, they move the marker. That stops the clock. As soon as the chain is set, the clock will start. And a first down at 10 for Missouri. They've got four receivers. If you count that man in the backfield on the left side, they're looking for the long ball to the near side. It is caught at the 35, up to the 40, 45 yard line, and taken down at the 48. Chase Kaufman, the tight end, hauls it in. Near the conclusion of our game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. To honor that, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Every time I read that, I think of the day when I upped that to 10,000 accidentally. <laughs> All the guys at Chevrolet fell, of phone off, fell off their chairs. They said, wow, are we ever generous? Oh, man. All right. First down at 10 here. Temple trying to find a little room. And uh, in Don't at midfield and into Nebraska territory, a three-yard gain. Well, you know, it seems like a lot of time, 12 and a half minutes left in this game. But the play before, Chase Kaufman had an opportunity to get himself out of bounds without eating up any clock. Go ahead, you're, you're going to be tackled close to the sideline anyway. Go ahead and step out of bounds, save, save yourself some time. Temple's got 84 yards on 15 carries, earning back his number one spot. It is a second down long yardage out of the backfield up to the 44 yard line is Tony Temple again. That is going to be a seven yard gain. Shy of the first down, though, and it's going to bring up yet another big third down for Missouri. Yeah, they're going to have to score quick and then hope for a, a quick stop by the defense. And, you know, they've been on the field an awfully long time. That, that Missouri defense, but right now, first things first. They've got their super fastball offense going here, as Gary Pinkle calls it. They had to slow it down because Chase Daniel wanted to change it up. Watching that play clock go down. Handoff's going to go straight ahead off the right side and a two yard gain. And uh, we'll have to have the clock stopped here because it's very close to a first down. Earl Goldsmith has started that tailback the carry. Well, look at the splits between the, the offensive linemen here for Missouri. I mean, it kind of reminds you of that Texas Tech offense where you get good angles, good blocking angles, spreading that big defensive line out, and you can come down and trap and, and pull around and get out of there. But Boys, there's some huge, huge angles. Man, Goldsmith, yeah. Goldsmith, who got the starts, has played now in 17 games. He's the third down specialist who took over the role for Tony Temple as their tailback because Temple had, has had fumbles in recent games. The Temple's had a strong game today. They miss it by that much. The nose of the football. Well, my favorite play. That quarterback, Keith. That's it. Just right behind big Adam Spiker. The uh, Remington candidate at center, him and Mike Cook on that right side, just kind of wedge right in there. Don't Three. waste any time. Just no. quick count them too. Get out, get out of the huddle, get, get to going. the line of scrimmage, and get it called. Three for nine on fourth down conversions, but 0 for three in the fourth quarter of games this year. Here is a fourth down attempt, and their hope of keeping the flame lit right here. And they're working out of the gun. Yeah, un uncovered receiver right there. Just go to him right now. Chase Daniel. He's going to carry to the right side. He's going to get the first down as he takes it to about the 40 yard line. Well, I'll tell you something. Shanley got him, but Daniel in this game has had a couple of carries where he's saying to the rest of the team, this is how we're doing. We are not done yet. No, not at all. And you know what? His body language, a lot of guys on that offense, they feed from him. Even the defensive guys, they see how Chase Daniels play, he, how he plays the game, and they kind of they kind of feed from it. I mean, it kind of gets you fired up when you see your quarterback stick his head in there. They've got five receivers out of the gun in the pocket, trying to move out. Gets a rush. Got to carry it. And uh, we'll take it back to about the line of scrimmage. There'll be no gain. Matt Weiner in New York. Gary, time for a singular ESPN All-America Player of the Week update. Texas Tech's Joel Filani has been burning the Baylor Bears all afternoon. 
to the tune of seven catches, 196 yards receiving, and three touchdowns. To vote, text vote date 7654 on your singular wireless telephone. That's a day. Yeah, we got a chance to watch Joe Falani have a yeah. heck of a game one day down in California. Big play here, and it's incomplete. And uh, the receiver ended up getting pushed back into the backfield over there on the far side, Jared Perry, and it was nowhere near the football. Boy, I mean, and you can hit him behind the line of scrimmage. You're going to see the screen right here come develop. Then he's going to just start up and come right back down un underneath. And you can hit him. You see number eight gonna put his hand on him, Andrew uh, Shanley. And once he's behind the line, he is fair game. A third down and 11. 13 out of 25, 157 yards in the air. The little short comeback and not a first down. It'll be brought to the 36 yard line. Only a gain of three for Martin Rucker. And now another fourth down play coming up for Missouri. Well, I think I think Missouri Gary they're playing right into the hands of this Nebraska football team by throwing the screens underneath and you know the little runs that they're having here and there. You've got base personnel on the field and you've got two outstanding tight ends in Rutger and Kaufman throw the football down the field of those guys make Bo Rude and, and Stuart Bradley play defense and make them come out of just the base. Uh, personnel. Fourth down. Nebraska fans know what a big play this is. They're looking to the sideline. It's caught first down at the 25 yard line. William Franklin, an 11 yard gain. He has been their leading receiver all year, but he's had a tough day with double coverage, but he finds a way to haul that one in. Boy, he sells Courtney Grigsby on an inside move. Watch him come down inside and then back out. And you see right on time with the football is Chase Daniel. He knows the body language of Will Franklin. I'm going to start inside, get Courtney Grigsby overcommitted, and then put that foot in the ground and go back outside. 13th play of the drive. Caught at the 20-yard line, Jared Perry, and he's not going to go anywhere, but it's good enough for a six-yard gain. And that's all you want. You're going to throw a quick hitch. A lot of defensive coordinators don't think from the left hash of the field that I will throw the hitch route way back across the field because the ball is in the air a long period of time. But if you got a quarterback that's accurate and has a strong arm like Chase Daniel, you don't hesitate to make that throw. Chase Daniel with a second down and a four. And off Temple's got some room. 15 takes it down to about the 13 yard line. Tony Temple on the carry. That's good for seven. We'll have our thrifty car rental postgame report time permitting coming up. Scores and highlights. John Craig and Doug back in New York. And they are shuffling players in a hurry on both sides now. Chase Daniel orchestrating a beautiful drive. Temple comes on in the backfield along with the Goldsmith. Oh, that middle of the field wide open for a time. Here's the option. Nowhere to go. Big hit by Jay Moore. An explosion into the backfield. He leads this team and tackles for a loss. Give him another one. Oh, they are playing cover two or that four cross umbrella back deep and you try to run the option against a very quick fast defense like Nebraska and Jay Moore right there. He's got the quarterback on that play and is able to get Chase Daniel down. Right here, I think I'm going to attack the middle of the field. They're in a soul in the middle of this Nebraska defense. Second down and 16. Daniel looking down the middle to the end zone. It is incomplete. Chase Kaufman, one of the tight ends that will stop the clock. Andrew Shanley, the senior on the coverage. When you do it, they try to bring Chase Kaufman from the outside in, and it takes a little bit too long. It allows for Shanley to follow him from the inside at the safety position all the way down and in just do it from a normal slot receiver maybe a tight end flexed out or just one of the the other slot receivers where you get a chance to get there quick Nebraska showing blitz 17th play launches one to the corner hoping little pushing and shoving it is incomplete and there are no flags Kaufman again was the intended receiver Courtney Grigsby on the coverage and it was Bo Rude from his outside linebacker position Position that blitzed and I'll tell you he gave Chase Daniel a shot right here he gets there and another with another corn husker and they're able to just get there in enough time to disrupt the rhythm of Chase Daniel what a play by Grixby reaching around he leads the team and pass breakups here we go again a fourth down and 16 game on the line Missouri's got to get a first down here over the middle for the TD touchdown Chase Kaufman just on a fourth 
fourth down conversion. This put the tight end in the middle of the field. They're trying to go too deep. The safeties are way off on the hash marks. It's been they've been begging them and daring them to throw in the middle of the field. And there, the tight end right in behind coverage over the linebackers and one heck of a throw. I'm going to throw it high and allow Chase Kaufman to climb the ladder and make a play. His sixth touchdown reception of the year. Missouri gets on the board. Still 8-10 to go. Looking for their 20th point right here. Wolford comes on for the PAT. What a drive. Under man right there by, by Chase Daniel. I mean a tremendous job at quarterback. The kick is up and it is good. It took 620. They ran 18 plays to cover 80 yards. Missouri gets the touchdown and they are back in it. Well, Missouri, is it a little uh, late or not? Coffin with a touchdown catch. And uh, for Chase Daniel, the quarterback from Missouri, a new single season mark. Passing yardage uh, 2,484 now as he went from fifth to first in Missouri history. On that last drive, and a great drive it was, but they got to get the football back again. Chase Daniel right on time with the football there, and nice job of leading his football team back, and leading them down the field, and then punching it in the end zone. And this kick will uh, be taken at the seven-yard line. Lucky's got it, and he will be brought down at about the 22-yard line. And now you got to hang on to that football if you are Nebraska. Do not cough it up. That's what Missouri's hoping for. A little red down there celebrating 117 years of football here at Nebraska, along with a record crowd here at Memorial uh, Stadium. In Lincoln and Nebraska's got the football and the lead with 802 to go here in the fourth quarter. Zach Taylor will work under center. They're going to try and hang on to it here. It is a first down at 10. Jackson is the lone running back. You see he's just watching the clock run down. They're going to wait till the last second on that play clock before they snap the football. Time running against Missouri. Jackson gets hit line of scrimmage. And moves forward for maybe a yard. Harrington on the tackle. Now let's take a look at the rush chart here. And Brandon Jackson and the job he's done all 91 yards of it today. A touchdown to the left, but he's had most of the success right up the gut, right at the Missouri defense in the middle of the formation. Had a couple of nice runs on the outside, but it's basically been right at the heart of that Missouri defense. He has solidified his spot as number one after his 182 yard performance against Oklahoma State last week. Another big performance in the backfield. Nebraska with a second down and nine. Todd and Jackson both there. That's going to be incomplete. You know, I, I just don't. What is that? I, I don't understand, and I don't agree with what Bill Callahan is doing in this situation. It's a, it's too much time right now to break what you've done early. Break your rhythm. They come out of the huddle. The clock started. It's running down. Everybody just kind of gets lethargic. Then you throw a pass out there like that, which is going to stop the clock. If you're going to run the clock, run the football. Yeah. Stopping the clock's the big thing to me here. It, uh, that's what yeah, Missouri, that's what Missouri wants. wants you to do, and they can save those timeouts. They still have all three of them. And it brings up a, a big third down play. Ten out of 14 third down conversions. They go to Jackson. There is no room, and he is brought down. Now Missouri's going to get the football with pretty good wow. field position. And I'll tell you what, you know, right there, that, that drive is on the, on the shoulders of Bill Callahan. That is inexplicable on the second down. Don't, don't understand that one whatsoever. And that, that keeps teams in the game. Yeah. I mean, it really does. And stops the clock. So, Zach Taylor will head on out of there. And they're going to have to punt the football. This is only the second punt that uh, they've had to put up in this game. Titchener comes on to do the kicking, averaging 40. And that's a fair catch call for at the 34 yard line. Marcus Woods, a 40 yard punt. More importantly, though, for Missouri, very little time came off that clock. Yeah. And they've got the football back. Tonight, don't miss the showdown between two of the best the Big 12. Oklahoma comes to College Station to rumble the Aggies of AM. Some of you will see UCA California, Virginia Tech, Miami. Check your local listings. It's presented by Southwest Airlines, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. All right, big Javorski Lane tonight. Miss, the big fella. Mr. Truck. I'm a train. <laughs> Missouri's got the football first down and 10. And it'll be carried up to the 35 36 by Goldsmith for a two yard gain. Don't understand that call either. 
I mean, maybe nobody wants to get, get in the end zone. You got to throw the football to win. You hadn't popped a long run. Maybe one, one in this entire game if you're Missouri. You got to line up. You don't have time on your side. Throw the football down the field for yardage. All right, out of the shotgun again. It'll be Chase Daniel. Daniel's got the five receivers, including one out of the backfield. Little comeback hook of the first down marker caught up to midfield. Still spinning around. Great effort. All the way down. To the 41 yard line, William Franklin, a 23 yard gain. Let's check in a Sports Center in game at Weiner back in our New York studios. All right, Gary, it's been a rough afternoon for Joe Paterno and Penn State at Wisconsin. They trail by 10, and Paterno was knocked down when Andrew Corliss, his tight end, was taken out by a couple of Badger defenders. The 80 year old legend eventually left the game on a cart with his knee in a brace, and his team still trails by 10. It is caught to the 30 yard line and down to the 27 yard line Alexander on the catch a 13 yard gain as Chase Daniel again moving this team in the air. Yeah and when they attack when Dave Pritchett and the offensive coordinator attacks Nebraska down the field that's where they've had the success not throwing underneath not trying to little run the little stretch play underneath it or outside the tackles it's down the field attacking this Nebraska defense first down and 10 Daniel is putting on a show here in this fourth quarter he's looking over the middle of the end zone it'll be incomplete down around the five for Chase Kaufman the tight end stopping the clock with 506 left to go in the fourth Boy, film study tomorrow Chase Daniel's going to wish he had two passes back that one to Chase Kaufman and then the one to Brad Equu Equu and uh, early in the first quarter of this football game where he just kind of overthrew him a little bit and they had to settle for a field goal but I'll tell you what driving right now Missouri still in this football game they got to get the touchdown 19 for 33 233 yards in the air for Daniel uh, and that one's going to be incomplete at the 20 yard line not really close on that one as it's out of bounds yeah, he had Jay Moore the defensive end on the left side of the formation right in his face he got by Joel Klingler and beat him and had a clear path to chase Daniel and really could step into that throw Moore. Outstanding job again as he is a an outstanding rusher. And once again, you got a linebacker out here matched up on the tight end. Kaufman. Three for eleven. Big rush put on. Gets away, gets a block, throws it at the 25-yard line. It is caught. Nowhere near enough for a first down. Nebraska's arguing the quarterback was down. Jared Perry made the catch. Well, Jared Perry just fighting and scratching over there working against Andre Jones and it's a catch I thought he had his hands under it but what a job of Chase Daniel getting his football out Boy, he was close to being he, down he was close that knee was close to being down they're going to take a timeout Missouri is here I believe there's arguments going on on both sides of the field one from Missouri they want the timeout clock keeps running and everybody's in the face of the officials trying to get the timeout. the clock kept going the other question is was that ball actually caught by Jared Perry well the, the crowd here which are every one of them with the exception of a couple of hundred are uh, Nebraska fans so you know you're going to get that from them little frenzy going on here in the sea of red fourth quarter with Nebraska on top. We are in the fourth quarter with Nebraska leading it. Couple of issues here. One was the quarterback down before he released this football. Were his knees on the grass? Well, it's going to be close. I mean, it hits, but he's already in motion of throwing the football. And under the rules, if you're saying the knee gets him down right here, he's down. You see the knee on the ground there, and then the ball's coming out. But you know that's one of those touchy <laughs> touchy yeah. ones with you know whether he's down or if, is he already in motion of throwing the football how far off of his hand was the ball when the knee hit did is Jared it? Perry really catch that football yeah, oh, that's another issue <laughs> we were using uh, we were talking uh, Andre I'm saying the, it's one heck of a play yeah. it's a completion how about that during the break we were saying though it's like in basketball with a shooter yeah. on the clock if you haven't released the football if you haven't released the basketball if you haven't released it then in fact it's not a shot it's not a shot and it doesn't count it's kind of the same thing in football if you haven't let that ball go by the time your knee touches then you're down yeah that's true but the call on the field was that it was a good pass you've got to have the evidence upstairs uncarved diverted evidence that in fact he was down in order for the replay booth to overrule the call on the field 
Our understanding now is that they have decided he was down. Now the question is, where was he on the field? Yeah. Where are they going to put the football? More than he came down. And you know, if you chase Daniel, you're getting this kind of pressure. You just got to find somewhere to get rid of this football. Right there, throw it in the stands. Throw you out of the tackle box. Let it go somewhere. But boy, that that's close, Gary. I mean, yep. you can see the arm coming up or coming through actually as the knee was hitting simultaneously with the ball coming out. It's going to bring the ball back it looks like to about the uh, 41 yard line if that's in fact the call. And if it is it's going to be a very long yardage situation. So Gary Pinkle Missouri Bill Callahan Nebraska looking on here as this is a vital drive for Missouri trying to get this football in to give themselves a chance by making it a one touchdown differential. Nebraska is trying to avoid losing their third in a row. They have had three three game losing streaks over the last four years. They don't need one here. Missouri trying to get a big win on the road. They haven't won a game here since 78 against Nebraska on Nebraska's home turf. Well, we'll get the official word right now. Maybe. <laughs> okay. In a minute, in a second. They After got review. <laughs> He was ruled down. Fourth down. Ball is spotted at the 41 yard line. Will be fourth down. Please reset the clock to 459. 459. Wow. There's the biggest change. That's a big, big there's, loss. There's 419 on the clock. They set it back to 459. <laughs> That actually could be to Missouri's advantage. Absolutely. But because of where that spot was, they've fourth, lost some yardage. Fourth and forever. Yeah. This is a fourth and forever. The first down marker is all the way down at the 18 yard line. And don't ask me what I'd call in this situation because I don't have a play for fourth and 23. <laughs> I'd put four guys <laughs> down at the 10 yard line and, and throw it. Get vertical. Get vertical, guys. All right, Chase Daniel, the quarterback from Missouri, another crucial fourth down, a fourth down and 23. Daniel out of the shotgun, gets protection, looks over the middle, and throws it incomplete. They do not convert. Chase Daniel banging his hands on the carpet. He threw to the receiver on the out. The receiver came back in. Yeah, he had Chase Kaufman. He works his way down the field, runs very well for a tight end, gets to the first down marker, and you see outside is where the open area is. He had Courtney Grigsby playing inside position. He was just Chase Daniel thinking he's going to work his way back outside. He almost could have had that one for a completion. Yep, he had room on the outside, but that's not where the ball was thrown. So, Kaufman coming back on happy. The Nebraska football team now once again will try and hang on to it. In the last drive, they couldn't do that. 4.41 left to go here in the fourth. Brandon Jackson will stay in that backfield. He's had 28 carries and 94 yards in this football game. And there he is, number 32. Get to the line of scrimmage and uh, taken down by Harrington. No gain. Dave Lamont. Well, Gary, it's one of our favorite days of the year. The third Saturday in November is National College Football Day, and we're celebrating by wearing these pins around town. We've got a few of them over here, and, you know, this year for the first time, National College Football Day is linked up with the V Foundation for Cancer Research. The V Foundation for Cancer Research, of course, was founded in 1993 by ESPN, the late Jim Valvano. They've raised more than $60 million. And commemorative National College Football Day lapel pins were distributed to every Division I head coach, and a lot of us in the media today were wearing them proudly and loving the fact that you're in a great atmosphere here on National College Football Day. Celebrating that first game back in 1869 at Rutgers with Princeton and Rutgers playing it. The pitch out flag is down behind the play. Jackson will take it up to the 44 45 yard line. There is however a flag down. It's usually in the area somebody maybe jumped a little early or a holding penalty when it comes from the, the referee. Illegal motion yeah. number 41 offense. Five yards, second down. Started a little bit early. That helps uh, Missouri as it stops the clock again with uh, three minutes and 40 seconds remaining. Bill Callahan with the gathering of a number of offensive players making the decision. He calls the offensive plays, the head coach. They all come over and stand and wait. And then after he's made the decision out on the field, they come. Nebraska 
just wants to hang on now and to give themselves a great chance of winning the Northern Division of the Big 12 and a chance to go to that championship game in Kansas City against the Southern Division winner which a lot of people think is going to be Texas they are the number one second team right now timeout. timeout is taken the second charge to Missouri and it will come with 340 left to go here in the fourth. I want to remind you tonight do not miss the showdown two of the best of the Big 12 Oklahoma College Station will be the place the Aggies of A&M some of you will see UCLA California or Virginia Tech Miami check your local listings Saturday night football presented by Southwest Airlines 8 Eastern 5 Pacific that'll be a good ball game down in Kyle Field and this is the only play right here that kept Texas A&M from being undefeated Graham Harrell down the sideline Mr. Johnson cashing it in and that's the one that's the play beats George Peterson down that sideline that's that's why a and M's not undefeated otherwise you'd have an undefeated Texas A&M football team playing against Oklahoma tonight Texas A&M four and one Oklahoma's four and one uh, a three and one rather in the southern division of the Big 12 Baylor Oklahoma State and then Texas Tech. Texas on top with that five and old mark in the Big 12. Yeah, and they're going to get Nebraska at Kyle Field next week and then on the road to Texas, which is a, a great rivalry in college football. The Texas A&M Aggies and the Texas Longhorns. And the, the Northern Division with the Missouri and Nebraska both at three and two in Big 12 play. That's why this game's so important, even though there'd only be a one game difference in the win loss column. Tiebreaker is head to head. So the winner of this one in effect takes a two yeah. game edge in the uh, in the division. Lucky is in the backfield and gets the football and will move it over midfield down to the 48 yard line. That's good enough for a six yard gain. Sulak moved in and put the hit on and it looks like it's uh, enough for a first down very close. You know, we thought we'd see as many as four running backs today for Nebraska. This was going to be close, and they're going to bring the change out and measure it. But we saw Brandon Jackson. He's had one heck of an afternoon. Marlon Lucky is, when he's been in the game, has run awfully hard. But we thought we'd see Cody Glenn and Kenny Wilson as well. They've kind of been silent today. It's just been the two two headed monster and Lucky and, and Jackson. They have earned the right to be out there because of what they've done in recent games. Jackson's yeah. going to have another 100 yard game. Probably he's got 98 and a TD. Lucky's had nine carries for 29 yards and that's been it. They are the running backs who have done the running. There's uh, Jackson. Take a look at what he's done. Yeah it just kind of inside and you making guys miss. He's able to break outside. Got a nice little wiggle to him there. And you'll see him. He'll just pound away at a defense trusting runner trust his offensive line. He gets kind of tucks back in between there running behind Dane Todd his big fullback there almost mix up with Zach Thomas and that's the touchdown run to kind of cap the drive. But he's had a heck of an afternoon over a thousand yards gained uh, coming into the game he had a thousand twenty six and uh, will move in on another hundred yards to be added to that in this game and this uh, Horn Lake Mississippi runner is proving to be their number one go to guy in that backfield now as it's really gone down from four to one yeah. and back to carrying the football. Here is a fourth down short yardage Jackson stays in that backfield and a big movements and it looks like it's going to be a first down on a penalty the long count and movement and striker Sulak moved into that line of scrimmage Yeah, they call that they explode to offside defense in the 38. They call it exploding from one formation to another get a lot of movement a lot of hard count from Zach Taylor and that's exactly what they were trying to do. They got striker Sulik to jump off size which gives them the first down. Missouri is going to have to look back at a yet another game where the turnovers have mattered so much. Nebraska's got 14 points off two turnovers by Missouri. Nebraska they've had a turnover but they've given up nothing off that turnover and for Missouri the third game with the turnovers all of them have been losses for them have made the difference Jackson in the backfield again first down and 10 there he is cutting back to the inside it'll be good enough for about three yards and we're moving over that 100 yard mark today in rushing our Chevrolet players of the game Brandon Jackson number 32 he just saw carrying the football and 
Tony Temple on the other side in recognition of their efforts Chevrolet will make a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Well, they got what they wanted out of the running game from Tony Temple with Missouri but just you mentioned it the turnovers too too hard too tough to overcome they spotted 14 points off turnovers Chase Daniel right there playing from behind the eight ball all afternoon long. It will be a second down and long yardage. Jackson on the carry. Jackson breaks away and will take it all the way down to the 31. Fumble the football. It ended up on the field here, but it looks like it's still Nebraska's ball. You see him right here in a nice little stiff arm against David Overstreet. No, oh, Missouri got it. Came out. Missouri's got the football back on a fumble. A little reach in from behind to help that ball out. And it was Stryker Sulik, the guy that jumps off sides, comes up with a fumble recovery here, comes in, gets a nice paw in there, and then comes up with a fumble recovery in Missouri. Yet to roll over. They they are still fighting and scratching. They get a look from upstairs, but that is a fumble. That is a fumble. Another question on the review. All plays are reviewed is whether or not he was down before that football came loose. Sulak had a nice reach in from behind here. Yeah right there the ball's coming out and it's out and it is uh, that's a fumble. The replay booth will take a look at this. They see the same replays that you do. Ball's coming out then the knee hits it's on the ground. So Missouri may get another shot at it here if the play uh, as called on the field holds up. They are all out of timeouts. So they're really going to have to rush the football downfield as they are trailing here 34 to 20. Well, if you're one of those backs at Nebraska, as close as they are with talent, talent level, you're almost afraid to put the ball on the ground. That ball's out before the knee comes down because you know the next guy, Marlon Lucky, Cody Glenn, Kenny Wilson, <laughs> they're all capable of toting the mail. So you don't want to put start putting them on the ground. Used to see running backs in this situation, Andre, would take both arms. You would have that football in the yeah. cradle. When you get in a crowded area, most young runners should put it away. You get in a crowded area like that, instead of trying to break your fall, go ahead and then turn your shoulders as you're going, put both hands on the football. But there, that's that's close. The ball's coming out, the knee hits right there. Ball's out right now, and then the knee hits. Good job of camera work there. Right there, you get a nice close up look. The ball is out, the knee is touching, it's on the ground. Have to be, there Should has to take this long. There has to be that indisputable evidence to overturn the call on the field. After review, the ball was fumbled, belongs to Missouri. Nebraska will be charged with a timeout. So, Nebraska, that was a coach's review as they asked for the look. And if you ask for that review and you get one chance a game to do it, you are charged with a timeout if, in fact, the call is not changed. And, and it's a good gamble on the yeah. part of Bill Callahan. You, you're trying to get the football back and run the clock out. And if, if not, all you lose is a timeout. Yeah. You got no time Nebraska defense, 30th in the nation in points scored against them. They've given up only an average of 17 a game. Missouri's got 20 in this one. Chase Daniel, no timeouts to work with. First and 10. Daniel. To the sideline it is caught and out of bounds at the 43 Martin Rucker 12 yard gain. Got out of bounds stops the clock. Well you see a bunch of guys over here three Missouri players only two Nebraska defenders and that's why Martin Rucker's wide open able to get down the field on a nice little out route. Everybody's dropping deep gets himself out of bounds and saves time. Four receptions 32 yards for Rucker. The tight ends in Missouri, two of the best, are really not going to part of this game until the fourth. Big rush put on near side, lobbed. Uh, that'll be incomplete. Threw that one away as he had a big time rush coming at him. Alexander, the receiver, the only receiver even remotely close to that one. Well, they try to, to uh, blitz Bo Rude from the inside position. You, Jay Moore getting pressure as well. But as a receiver, you have to look down inside. And notice whether you've got to be able to determine as well as the quarterback when the blitz is coming because you know what the sense of urgency kicks in. I got to shorten my route up. I can't go the full 15. I got to maybe shorten it to 10 and get in and out of my break. Only a sophomore quarterback here, Daniel, and a carry. He'll get squeezed and he'll get taken down after just a one yard gain by Jay Moore on the hit. 
Number one rule in the two minute drill Gary. Do not take a sack if you're the quarterback because the clock's running. Everybody's got to run back, get set. A lot of time being wasted. They are three for 12. Not a good number in third down conversions. Missouri third down here. And again, he's looking to carry the football and uh, fake the pass. He gets it up to midfield. Fumble the football or not? He gave it up. And let's see where they mark it here. We'll wait for the official. Again, Rude again. It's Nebraska's football. Bo Rude getting it done. And the whole crowd here starts yelling, Rude. He's had a day, <laughs> isn't he? Yeah, he's had one heck of a day. Sticks that big paw in there and rakes it out. And then all of a sudden, he's like, I don't want to run very far this time. I was a little tired the last time that happened. He's had one heck of a ball game today. Chase Daniels had a couple of touchdowns, but he's also had two interceptions. And now the ball stripped out of his hands. Third turnover. Missouri the other two have gone for touchdowns for Nebraska. Well, I just thought that Missouri where the success was coming for them was attacking Nebraska the middle of the field and cover two and then down around the slots on the outside they keep trying to run you know horizontally and throwing little bubble screens and things of that sort and not having much luck and Chase Daniels all of a sudden feels like he's got to take everything on his shoulders. Yep. Zach Taylor quarterback here hands off to Lucky. Corner to the 40 and to the 35 yard line. It will be good enough for a nine yard gain for Marlon Lucky. So, this Nebraska team, they've avoided a number of situations where it looked like Missouri was going to get right back into this game. Their defense has come up with big plays and uh, they've been able to convert when they've needed on offense, especially in the third down situations today. It's made an enormous difference. 10 out of 16. Nebraska third down Missouri three out of 13 and uh, 413 total yards put up here lucky again on the carry Nebraska piling up the offensive yardage again in this football game and Bill Callahan with that offense he brought from the pros and the West Coast style has taken hold here in Nebraska yeah, and you talk we talked with Johnny Rogers in the second quarter and he said you know now we can recruit kids from all over the country because we've got an offense that as a pro style it basically gets you ready for the next level and that's one of the recruiting spills that they give they sell it or sell this program on that that you come in learn the West Coast offense you transition very well on into the NFL Zach Taylor is going to be 15 and 7 as a starter at quarterback for Nebraska that ball carried up to about the 33. Three. That'll be an eight yard gain, and that will be it. The Corn Huskers have given themselves a great chance to go to the Big 12 championship game as they win this one over the Tigers 34 to 20. Dave Lamont down on the field. Andre Ware, yours truly, Gary Thorne upstairs. Hope you enjoyed it. A lot more to come. John, Craig, and Doug standing by in New York from Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Gary Thorne. We bid you adieu.